Hi there, my name is Kendrick and welcome to another ENFP male interview. Today I get to interview Jeanette. So Jeanette, welcome. Oh, thank you, Kendrick. Nice that you have me here. For sure. So Jeanette, can you tell me what your full type is? Okay, uh, I'm an uh, ENTJ. Uh, I'm an MF, uh, T-E-N-I, blast sleep, play, consume. Cool. So I'm super happy to interview you because I haven't interviewed like the, the, the pure standard Myers-Briggs ENTJ yet. So you are like the first, you know, okay. <laughs> you know cause your, your functions, your animal stack is exactly that of like a standard ENTJ should be. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to interview you because you are the first normal ENTJ. I mean, I'm not, okay. I'm not saying that I, animals I, I are not normal. Yeah, I don't, I don't think like the normal one, but anyway, yeah. Yes. Is that? I don't feel like the normal one as I'm a um, sleep savior, you know, yeah. and uh, in the archetype, you know, the archetypical, uh, ENTJ is kind of, I think, blast play. You yeah, know, I they mean, get a lot done and so on. Hmm? I mean, blast sleep, blast play, they're both the standard. Okay. Yeah, okay. They're, both, they're both okay. Uh, so any, anyhow, let's start with uh, your functions. Your feminine mm -hmm. extrovert thinking, how do you experience, you know, your feminine TE? Yeah. Uh, actually, for me, setting boundaries is, is really, really hard, you know, and I'm kind of um, trying to be really nice with people. You know, I, it's a really hard time for me to, you know, bargain or anything like that because I'm kind of playing the nice uh, girl role, you know, and uh, actually previously I, I thought I was an ENFP because I kind of, um, I thought this was a feeling trait, you know, so I, I, I thought all thinkers are, are these uh, hard uh, people who kind of yeah. see things black and white and they can just say, you know, without um, feeling any, anything, they can just, you know, you know what I mean? So, so it's kind of soft. Yeah. But, it, but it's, uh, and I can't really say no to things either. I mean, not just people. It's like, um, I talked to somebody today who is actually, I, I type him as um, Effie, uh, for Effie first. And uh, he said, I have this ADHD um, typical behavior. He calls it ADHD. It's not ADHD really, but uh, that he does like 10 things at a time. You know, he jumps between things. And I told him, you know, I do the same, actually. It's really hard for me to stay focused on, on one thing. So I kind of jump around and maybe that's also due to the femininity. I don't know. What do you think? Um, well, the, my first comment is, I think you are right that the standard ENTJ would have masculine TE. So you, yeah. you are like yeah. the, the friendlier ENTJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. I don't bother to try too much. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. saying the masculine TE ENTJs are not friendly. I'm just making fun of them. This is I'm <laughs> yeah. joking. I'm double the side. I, I, I know a couple of those and I'm not like them at all. So. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, I mean, we're just talking about stereotypes. So, um, yeah. So, yeah you're, so not all ENTJs are, you know, very hard at, at a tribe you know some of them are flexible uh, like you yeah. and feminine te um but uh what was your question again to me about i forgot your question already uh i don't know uh, it was something about um yeah it was about choosing tasks you know that i can't pick one i can't stay on track it's kind of like and the ni is also feminine by the way so maybe that's the reason why i kind of do um i multitask a lot you know, and it, it's, um, it really drains me. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I, I Maybe think, then I... I think if you were left alone, mm -hmm. you can focus. But I think if there's, yeah. some, I think if there's yeah, someone I think around, three, yeah, because yeah, I think if there's someone around, because you, your, your blast is double feminine, mm -hmm. it's very easy for you to get like pulled by the tribe, you know? Yeah. So, but I think if you're by yourself, I think you can focus. Mm. I, I, mean, I don't know if that's at my At my work, uh, they have an, you know, open office, uh, you know, a big room where everybody is. I can't, I can't be there at all. You know, it's really like I have to put up big signs that uh, brain work in progress and stuff like that. And still people yeah. come and tap me on my shoulder. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's really horrible. I have to, had to have a cap, you know, on, you know, and almost yeah. not, not really sunglasses, but, you know, really to, to shade, uh, um, shade out everybody else, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. Okay. I, and I don't, I'm not facing the wall, you know, I, I'm really facing the room. I can't, I, you know, it's impossible. So I have actually found a different place where I, I hide. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Now you know why you can't, uh, why you can't focus because you, yeah. the feminine TE and the feminine NI just can't focus. Right. So you need to be very, no. so yeah, you got yeah. it. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go to your next function. NI. Mm -hmm. So 
um, that is organizing um, your known information and mm -hmm. known ideas, known concepts. Yeah. Um, talk about the, but it's feminine. So talk about the, or, but you have it in a savior state. So you can still do it. Talk about yeah. how you do that. How do you organize your known information? Yeah, and it's double topic? activated because it's also in the sleep animal. So it's really, yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, the intuition is, is really, really strong. Uh, basically, um, a, a boss of mine once told me that uh, you have to stop using uh, analogies in class. I, I'm a math teacher. Uh, the, the students won't understand you. You have to, you know, she didn't say ST, uh, you know, reporter talk, but she was ST, by the way. So, but that was what she meant, you know. So um, the intuition has always been almost a problem. I mean, I, I, I kind of like it a lot, you know, uh, but it's like people are like, what a goof you are, <laughs> you know. So, so in that way, I always knew I was uh, intuitive and I, I thought I was uh, lead uh, intuitive. And uh, I basically, I have a really hard time remembering the concepts you know I, I didn't understand this previously but i've been doing an extreme amount of uh, sleep processing now for the last three weeks since i got my type back and i just realized i do really build you know I, I build an understanding and it's really scary that this understanding um is really my world you know i really believe in what i build <laughs> and uh, it's hard for me to see if something is wrong in there you know so um, I thought I had NE, you know, masculine NE or something, because I was kind of goal focused, you know, and when I explain something, I go into tangents all the time. So I try to figure out what does that mean? Why, where does that come from? And, but still, ultimately, I always want to, you know, uh, converge into, you know, the end point. And this is my point, I usually say, and, so on. and I'm really upset if I'm interrupted <laughs> before the end. Yeah, the NE don't do that. They don't, they don't focus on the end point they, they they just want to keep gathering more so that's definitely yeah. different from what you're doing yeah and then uh, i have to um uh, go on saying that my husband who is uh, i probably think he's a lead ni and a masculine so it's really like they say it's like the highway you know it's uh, bulldozing through everything and there's no way any se information can ever you know disturb that ni so when I saw the contrast, you know, living together with somebody with that kind of, you know, extreme NI, it's even my friends even comment, even though they don't know his type, you know. So compared to his NI, my intuition, you know, had to be NE, you know. Well, it has to be feminine. <laughs> yeah, now I know. I, I couldn't understand it because it wasn't in my world. You know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have, I had built kind of a solid uh, ENFP, um, reality you know i was comparing everything to the enfp reality and i was explaining yeah. all this people pleasing stuff with uh, that i had demon te and it was kind of feminine you know i had all kind of explanations and and um sometimes i, I really do remember these moments when i got some da new data point point that didn't fit my model <laughs> and, you know i remember i actually looked at it for a while you know and just tossed it away you know because it didn't fit the model yeah, and it's really embarrassing. <laughs> well, I'll ask you about your consumer last later. So we'll talk about that. Yeah, don't yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, no. we'll get to that. I'm going down the part. So we'll, 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 we'll get to that. But it's there. connected to the NI. So it has to be kind of included in the. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's super important. You can't do NI yeah. without SE. So yeah, we'll talk about we'll, we'll cover that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, it's kind of funny you're talking about the masculine NI, how they just pull those through reality. Um, my, yeah. girl, my girlfriend has masculine NI. She got type. Oh. Like, by David Shan, right? As an INTJ jumper. So yeah. she's NIFI. And yeah, we always fight about that. Like her masculine NI is so strong. She's like, mm -hmm. no, my life, it has to be like this. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that <laughs> that plan has this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. Because yeah. And he can see all the all the problem, the chaos, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, uh, no. Like, are you sure? Like, you know, so it's, 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 it's always mm -hmm. a constant struggle. Um, yeah, but I can, I can see that too. I know I, I have had that problem at home too. I, I kind of, um, it's called the pre-mortem analysis uh, okay. and uh, I'm really happy I have a term for it now because now I can uh, tell him that well I'm doing I'm just doing the pre-mortem analysis it's it's a good thing you know yeah. if I if you have a plan a grand plan I can kind of see where it goes wrong or what uh, maybe maybe since it's 
um, an eye, it's kind of like I can see the obstacles you have to, you know, pass, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, since you're already talking about that, let's talk about your third function, which is masculine mm -hmm. SE. So even though you are consumed last, your SE is third. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's you have access to it. And it's also mm -hmm. masculine, so you can see it mm -hmm. better. So yeah. in that way, you can actually balance your NI and SE, even though you're consumed last. So talk about mm -hmm. um, talk about your having access to SE. But so, so <laughs> before you before you add on to that, it's yeah. your SE is also access through play. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you if you're gonna balance the NI with facts, you're not gonna research the facts yourself. You're gonna get from other people because it's play, right? Yeah. So yeah. Talk, talk about that. That's yeah. Oh, uh, I haven't really built my understanding to, uh, about the SE yet because I kind of thought I had SI, you know, I, I, it's so strong. I really have to, you know, get away the old uh, idea. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but what I realized, because, um, how would I say, I, I, got, I came to some kind of understanding that the, um, the gather function is masculine. That's something I understood. And uh, the organized function uh, has to be uh, feminine because it's kind of leaky. But I didn't really understand it was, you know, I, I had the S and N upside down. Uh, and I, I kind of, uh, Dave and Shan said something about uh, if they ask, um, if Shan asked Dave or, or uh, Cody something about, um, did you hit that kid or something like that? And and they will say no, because they didn't ask specifically. Yeah. You know? Right. And I do the same. Uh, it's like if somebody close to me asks me something and it's not spot on, you know, they ask me a question which is kind of related to it. Uh, or, or it's a question uh, where I can't say yes or no. You know, I would have to uh, explain something, but they ask it in that sense, uh, way. I become kind of, um, how would I say, I, I can't answer it, you know, I, I'm, I'm really stubborn, I'm <laughs> really weird, you know, with those kind of questions. And, uh, and this person I talked to, uh, uh, he's um, any savior, and he said, well, I mean, I know you're intuitive, I know you can fill in the gaps, he said, I mean, you, don't, you can answer the alternative question. You know, you know the alternative. You don't have to say yes or no. You you can fill in, you know. And I was like, oh, but I can't because you asked the wrong question, you know. So it's really, I guess it was some kind of demon state, you know, that I got into. So uh, this is a big realization that I, I do this too. And I really have to work on that because I have to count to 10, you know, and calm down a bit. And then maybe I can answer the question. It's really funny. You know? So so what, what what if someone asks you a question? It's not specific, but they tell you. So I'm just giving you an overgeneralization of this question. So mm -hmm. you know, you're okay to kind of go in tangents. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can, can you answer that then? If they say that in that in that in that in that manner, where they say, okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be okay. But um, uh, it's like, um, how would I say? Um, it's specific, specifically if it's kind of yes and no questions and none of them is 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 accurate you know so i don't know uh, but that's one thing and then also um for me uh, it's really important to have um you know solid facts because when i um when i make assumptions when i kind of you know draw the conclusions the, the ni conclusions from something uh it's serious business. I really have to know uh, what I'm drawing my conclusions from because I'm building from it. So uh, what I did uh, when I thought I was an ENFP was I had kind of, you know, sloppy facts. You know, I didn't know my type. So I was building something on top of nothing, you know, and uh, I don't normally do that. So, um, but I couldn't have my, you know, I, it was the best guess I had, you know, and all, and my friends had also told me they thought I was an ENFP, but of course that was uh, compared to anecdotes, you know, so, so it's, um, it's really important actually. Yeah. So that's also something that drives me into some kind of demon mode if, if, um, if let's say someone would, uh, um, you know, draw a conclusion and it's not correct, uh, uh, like, um, one of my uh, closest uh, people in my 
um, family is an uh, ESFJ, and uh, he is also, um, you know, drawing lots of any conclusions with uh, uh, where he, he kind of um, maybe only sees one possibility, you know, and thinks that's the truth. And then will tell me, tell me like it's a fact. And I always have to, I kind of ask, okay, so where did you get that from? And as I know him, I can't trust anything he says, kind of. So, yeah, I think it's really, really, really strong. Mm. I want to ask you about your blast now. You have double, mm -hmm. double feminine, double activated blast. Uh, talk about your double feminine, double activated blast. Like, are you just teaching, giving people um, abstract lessons all day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've done that all my life. Um, I've been trying to, I'm kind of uh, responsible for explaining, um, you know, the understanding. And uh, I remember already when I was about 10 years old, I always um, got into conflicts with uh, my classmates uh, because I, I, I didn't think they understood, you know, things. So I was probably really, um, you know, a besser visser, as they say in German, you know, really uh, pain in the ass there. And I didn't see it because I thought I was kind of, you know, helpful, explaining stuff and so on. So I think I've done that all my life, you know, and uh, harassed my, my poor parents at home and these kind of things. But uh, my blast is not really, uh, I didn't use it as, um, you know, to, it's of course, blast is of course to organize for the tribe, you know, but what I'm organizing is kind of understandings and ideas, you know, it's not like to do the dishes, you know, not that okay. kind of blast. So, so I don't know. It's um, oh, when I compare it to my, I think my mom was a, an ESFJ, and she, uh, um, which is SF blast, and, and it's it's completely different because it's kind of, you know, cooking for people and that those kind of things, taking care of the emotions and and. Uh, I think I think that was more the way I saw Blast previously. You know, I didn't really understand. I couldn't imagine I, I was a Blaster myself, you know. Well, there's there's four flavors. So you have the anti -blade. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it's kind of, you know, I, I was <laughs> I was shutting that out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your Blast is going to sound very much like Dave. You guys, Dave is also double feminine Blast, right? So mm, yeah. your, your Blast is going to sound like his Blast. You know, yeah, so I'm like, like I'm like a mix of Dave and Shan. <laughs> yeah, you are actually. Yeah, you are exactly a mix of them. Exactly. Yeah, you, spot on. <laughs> you yeah, are. I kind of I keep my hair like Shan, and uh, yeah, so I'm a little bit, you know. Yeah. Mm. But then, but you blast like Dave, so. <laughs> oh, do I? Do I? <laughs> no, because because he's double. His blast is the same as you. It's N I T. Yeah, yeah but, you, like, but do you feel that way? No, I'm I don't. It. No, because he's a he's a he's an observer, so he he, talk, he likes to talk about things. He likes to quote people. Yeah. You know, since we started this interview, you talk about like so many people already, like my yeah, mom. Yeah, and I didn't realize that, by the way, uh, because I have some other uh, single deciders uh, in my life, and uh, they talk uh, a lot about people too, and and kind of in different contexts. You know, yes. so uh, basically, if I talk about um, a thing, an organization, or something which is not really personal to me, you know. I won't talk about any people. It's not like they didn't make the subway work. You know, I would never say something like that. I would never, you yeah. know, blame people. And uh, and I don't um, I don't recall which researcher said what. You know, it's not. I'm not doing the INTP uh, thing either. So to me, it's more like I talk about um, the people uh, I interact with, the people that um, I have conflicts with, or or. I worry about and so on. So I talk a lot about these things. Yeah. So I talk a lot about people, but not not at all in the same way as they do. Yeah. Well, Blast is also talking about people like the same old story about the same people, you know. Because uh, yeah. if it if it was play, or if it was uh, yeah, if it was play, you would be talking about people, but different people uh, different like new people you know it's not old. yeah people. yeah no i talk about the same <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah exactly so i mean that's the difference there uh you you, you also like to use the word figuring out so or, like during this interview you kind of used that word a few times already like i'm uh, trying to figure it out trying yeah to figure it out. yeah so that's yeah. Anti, right um 
Okay, cool. Let's go to your, um, let's go talk about your play now since we kind of talked mm -hmm. about it already. Your play's third. Uh, it's a yeah. demon. Yeah. Um, but you have access to it. It's activated. Um, it's yeah. Andy. It's a it's, uh, reporter um, gathering facts. So basically you're going to be gathering facts from, from people. Uh, that's, that's the only way you can get new information because that otherwise you wouldn't. <laughs> So oh, talk about, like, sounds talk bad. About, what's that? Sounds bad. The only way I can, yeah. But I like people. So I like to talk with people. Yeah, I really yeah. like my play, actually. Yeah. Uh, I, I even thought I was play savior also at some point, you know, because um, I get really excited and and really wild when I talk to somebody, yeah. and uh, and especially if it's somebody else who is also really good at play, you know, you can you can ping back and forth, back and forth. It gets really fast you know and now i'm speaking english of course but even you know if it would be in my mother tongue swedish then you know it would be even much more I thought you're and, uh, yeah i'm from finland but i'm i'm from the minority so oh, I speak you're swedish. swedish and then you moved to yeah finland? Swedish. no uh finland is bilingual so it's a little bit like you know belgium or switzerland we have a uh, a minority of swedish speaking we used to be actually 20 percent um uh in 19 uh, whenever like uh, 19th century, 18th century, and uh, now we're just five percent. So oh, okay. we're, we're kind of people that Im immigrate a lot, and lots of lots of Swedish-speaking Finns move to the US. And so, are you are you mixed Swedish and Finnish, or are you just are, or are you just pure Swedish? I'm I'm pure, or uh, actually one fourth, uh, <laughs> two eighths. <laughs> okay, okay. Finnish, but you know, if I genetically, yeah. But it's a uh, I didn't learn Finnish at, at home. Nobody spoke Finnish, not even any grandparents or anything Finnish. So, so, and Finnish is really a hard language. So I've learned that um, almost as a, you know, the same way as I would learn German or something at school. Mm. Right, right. <laughs> but everyone in Finland can speak English too, and I'm pretty good. So it's, it's kind yeah, of- Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we have subtitles, uh, you know, on TV and, and kids, uh, of course, watch YouTube and, and play video games and stuff like that yeah. in English. Yeah, because I've traveled to every European country except for Iceland, right? So I, I noticed that, uh, I, I didn't notice the difference when I was traveling in Europe where some countries, mm. they don't accept English. Like I was in the Czech Republic. Yeah. I'm channel changing now, by the way. Like in, I went, yeah. I went to the Czech Republic. They have dubs, right, for their movies. So the people yeah. have- Yeah, the same goes for Spain and Germany. And if you compare Spain and uh, Portugal, because they, you know, culturally they are very uh, similar. Uh, in Portugal, uh, they have uh, subtitles, so that's it, it's you know you know they're really good at English. Yeah. You hijacked my blast. <laughs> so good. See, you can you can't hide it. Your double activated blast. Like you hijack, hijack my blast. Uh, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, um, uh, it's. I, I have to say one one thing here, uh, and I have to blast some some of my own. Uh, two of my best friends who have been really into MBTI. Yeah. Uh, they told me that uh, we laughed at your your type because uh, one of them is also an ENTJ, a very much more typical, and the other one I think she's she could be some kind of uh, ENFP with a masculine T, and um, uh, they're not into into ops, you know, so uh, they have been like, oh my god, you have been mistyped, you know, because you're clearly such an uh, ENFP, so. This is really interesting. I mean, it's it's such a tribe validation. You know, I don't know. It feels really good to hear your comments. You know, because all the comments I get at home is like, no, no, you can't be an ENTJ. You know, so it's yeah, really interesting. Well, I mean, it's easy to pigeonhole certain types just based on like that one version of that type. You know, there's 32 kinds. Yeah, of type, right. Yeah, I know. I know. So, yeah. But basically, uh, for me, uh, knowing this type uh is having all my kind of problems thrown in my face you know immediately i, I couldn't hide from them anymore yeah uh, because these you know people pleasing stuff and and uh trying to be a good person you know too much you know you know being really hard on yourself so those kind of things have been an issue for a long time but i kind of thought maybe it's a secondary thing maybe it's a small thing maybe i don't really have to work on it you know so when I saw the code, it was, um, you know, an eye opener kind of. So let's talk about that next. Let's talk about your NF. You have NF second, um, yeah. sleep, sleep second, um, <laughs> yeah. which is good. It's a really good thing for ENTJs to have NF second. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you 
they, they talk about Jim Carrey a lot in their class. He's an ENTJ, double feminine. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you yeah. know Jim Carrey, right? The comedian? Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. So, you know, like now that he's old, he uh, he's all in the NF, he's NF last. And uh, he's found his purpose and the meaning and whatnot. But you have it second. So I want to ask you about NF. Um, so NF mean NF for you guys, for ENTJs, as well as INTJs, ESFPs, mm-hmm. ISFPs, you guys all share the same function stack. Your NF is your, you find NF from within. The first, that's the first thing is you find it with, from within. Second mm-hmm. is it's a code that you adhere to, to make any decisions in life. Like you have a personal code. Yeah. I'll give you some examples from other types that have told me what their NF sleep code is. And then you can tell me if yeah. you have something similar. Okay. So, yeah. okay. I'll give you some examples and, and then later you can tell me. Um, so um, let me think. Um, Joko Willink, he's an ESFP. So his, his uh, NF code is uh, discipline equals freedom. Okay. So it's, it's a good one for him because he's an ESFP and he's chaotic, right? So for him to say discipline equals freedom, as an EP, you want freedom. So if you want this, yeah. freedom, you need to have discipline and discipline means control, self-control. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. a good one for him. Now, um, yeah. Kamala Harris, Harris is an ENTJ. I think she's yeah. the same type as you, actually. I think she's uh, actually, yeah, probably similar type as you. Yeah, but she had masculine NI, I think. She had, uh, or, she, or then she, she was, uh, or then she she had one coin off. It could have been uh, Blast Play also. Yeah, yeah, I think she's Blast Play. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's yeah. like, she, she's, she likes to like joke around and stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, but her, her code is um, to become joyful warriors. So, 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 she, oh, so, so, yeah. she, 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 she said that because uh, I, I think it means like you're fighting the fight for, um, you know, human equality, human uh, equal opportunity, mm-hmm. all, all that stuff. But I think she, she's aware that TE is harsh. It's not like a nice function. So mm-hmm. I think she's a joyful warrior to add like, you know, it's like some fun and friendliness to TE to make it more like FE. So that, mm-hmm. you know, so it's not so harsh. Yeah. Not so like, you know, punch in the face kind of like. Let's yeah. just work. That's no fun, right? So, so I think that's a good one for for lead TE actually. That's like, yeah, let's let's do the TE, but let's have some fun while we're doing the TE, right? Mm. So, so I think that's a good one. Um, yeah. Um, so, I, I think Steve Jobs NF code. He's an INTJ. I think his is uh, something yeah. like um, I I don't I don't know it, it exactly word for word, but it's something like um, stay hungry, stay foolish, stay foolish. Um, and okay. I think that's, that's a good one because stay hungry means like. Let, let's get let's have more 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 right yeah if you're an ij you want less you want like let's narrow it down right so yeah. it's a growth mindset um a saying for him because stay hungry means let's get more and stay foolish means let's do something chaotic something stupid right so that's yeah. like like ep ish so he's an ij and for him to say stay hungry stay foolish i think that's a good one for like his type yeah. he's gonna be yeah. open to new possibilities right mm-hmm. uh, so i want to bring it back to to you, um, do you have any mm-hmm. personal code that you adhere to, like an NF code? That you- yeah, um, I don't have it spelled out like that beautifully, <laughs> of course. Yeah. But uh, to me, it's really important that people are treated as individuals, you know? And this is something I've seen, for instance, uh, at school as a teacher, you know, where um, one school system uh, one method of teaching should fit all, but it doesn't. And uh, uh, I've been also working a bit for for these, um, you know, gifted students who who learn in a completely different way. And uh, those kind of things um, that maybe you shouldn't have to sit there in that classroom together with everybody. Maybe you need to. Maybe you're very introverted. Maybe you need to be on your, you know, somewhere else um, by yourself. So that's kind of something I feel is basically. A life mission kind of to help you know to let people kind of be themselves you know those kind of things i i, I have the exact word you're you're, you're trying to find it yeah what you're trying to say is individualized learning is that, is that exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it and and also um i also had a mantra or not mantra but whatever it's called uh that um to um, what was it? Because I had it in Swedish. It was something like uh, learning through play. You know, to um, 
play through your life or things like that. It's not really plays, of course, maybe TE, but it, but it was kind of like, you know, more like joyful, that kind of stuff also. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's the same thing as to be um, curious and uh, find joy in curiosity, things like that. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm so surprised that a lot of people that have NF sleep already has a code because I interview people and I tell them, I ask them, do you have a code? It's like, no, I don't have a code. And then five minutes later, they'll tell me their code. I'm like, you just told me your code. Like, you know, like, you know. Um, yeah, but as I mean, my, my, you haven't asked me about my FI, by the way, but it's, it's really, that one is also really, uh, it's like I have my own, um, um I, I, it's bad, but I don't know the words in English, but, you know, the basic laws that you have uh, in a country, the ones that, you know, um, you know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of like, um, I have this very, very strong foundation, kind of what is okay and what is not okay and what I what I kind of um, accept and, you know. Mm. So I thought I was a uh, savior. Well, your sleep is, is, is a savior and it's touching your FI. So you activate your FI mm. once, just once from one of your animals uh, in, a yeah. savior, in a savior state. So you do have uh, access to it when you do use sleep um which is good which is good because then you yeah you, you have yeah. half half 50 percent access of it from from your sleep <laughs> um yeah but it's but it's also um somehow I, I used to uh when i made decisions previously before i knew anything about cognitive functions or anything uh it was like i had two voices in my head you know i had the logic and i had how it felt i had kind of like what i what i wanted to do and now I see the other one also as the tribe opinion, you know, or maybe not my best friends. My best friends would um, make me choose something that's good for me, you know, because they are better at, at um, uh, keeping me safe than, than I am, <laughs> you know. But uh, I mean, let's say if I would like to end a relationship, for instance, uh, that would be really, really hard for me because my FI would know that I don't want to go on. This is not good for me. But the TE, uh, can't kind of find a, I don't know, it doesn't find the reasons or it has to vote or something. It's really, really hard. I would have to ask a lot of people, what do you think? You know, I would have to talk to a lot of people about it for a long time. Uh, I can't just, you know, yeah. And at some point um, the debate will go on. It, feel, it really feels like it's a parliament or something and the debate will go on. And suddenly at some point, uh, or maybe it's like the FI hasn't, chosen I don't know it's really hard for me to say but it's, it's some uh, trigger point that happens and then suddenly I make the decision and it's kind of like really late you know I can ponder for years kind of and then um, and that decision is so strong that um, let's say if I would have to uh, be with that person I, I would kind of throw up you know it was like it's like my body doesn't accept it you know it's really really strong I I, I I can't, um, you know, please any tribe or any person or anything when that point comes, because then it's kind of like stop, you know, it's really, really strong. But um, it happens quite rarely, you know, but I know that that's easier with things like, where do I want to sit in a room? What music do I like? I know that instantly if I hear a song and I don't like it, it's like, oh, and and it's not, not something I have to, you know, discuss with anybody, like, what's the reasons why I like this song? It's something I just know. And if I... Uh, see a, a room and I think it's ugly I know it immediately it's not and it's really it might bother me also a lot so you know I thought that was kind of my my savior decider you know no that sounds like your 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 uh, cons your that sounds like you're using consume and sleep uh and and, and fi um yeah yeah but it's, it's well, double masculine the consume yeah, I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Because I since you're <laughs> I'm, for, I'm forcing you, I'm forcing the for, what do you call it anyway? Yeah, uh, no, I mean, we'll we'll segue, you. We'll segue yeah. to that in a second. Um, yeah, you talked about relationships earlier um, and, and and ending relationships. Um, sleep is also in charge of setting boundaries with a tribe. So you have sleep yeah. in a savior state. That means you are pretty good at setting boundaries then with people. No, I'm not good at it. And that's, and that's really strange because... Um, or do you know, the, at least are you aware when it's time to set boundaries? Even if you don't do it, are you aware? Because you do have femininity. Yeah. Either, so are you aware? Yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware, but I'm not allowed. Kind okay, of. I see. <laughs> not a, yeah. okay. It's really, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
it's like a, a constant who's, internal who's tell, fight. Who's, tell, who's telling you you're not allowed? You, did you tell I, you? I, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, it's um. I don't know. It's kind of um. Hmm. I'm, I'm curious I, as for my yeah theory. yeah I, I think that's the life struggle if I know the answer to this I, I <laughs> it's a, yeah. it would be kind of um you know <laughs> the solution to all my problems <laughs> so it's, it's a difficult question no, because I, I'm an EPEJ so mm -hmm. I'm I'm like what I'm a sub like a little bit of it I am part EJ mm -hmm. so yeah so you understand I, the problem. I, I, but I've never felt I'm not allowed to set boundaries with people even though I'm sleep last I've always felt like if hmm. I don't like someone, I just don't spend time with that person anymore and I cut them off, you know. So I I, I don't yeah. need I don't need permission to do that. Um, but but I noticed with pure EJs, like you guys do need permission. I'm like, huh? What what so oh, what actually so actually it's, it connects to the same thing as I just previously uh, said, like when the switch hits, you know, when the switch turns. So it's something like um if somebody steps on me too much you know uh there once was a, a person i'm not going to go into details but you know kind of like stealing some stuff from me and that's kind of way over the top you mean i mean it's like um uh this was a person i would normally engage with somehow you know through family or or you know that kind of situation so I haven't spoken to them for 10 years, you know, and I, it's, uh, I'm not going to speak to them ever again, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, uh, so that's, of course, setting boundaries. Yes, you know? 100%. Uh, and uh, it's kind of immovable, you know, I, I will never, well, I couldn't say I would never, it, it would, if somebody would say I was, I was a, re a real asshole back then, I have changed, you know, that's a different thing. It's not like, uh, I, I could, it looks like, it's not like I could never uh, forgive somebody, but it really would take, have to take and be an effort for, from that person, you know, um, and the initiative would have to come from them. It's not like I would go there and, um, are you ready to apologize or something? I, I wouldn't do that, you know? So, um, yeah, so, but I set boundaries only when somebody does something really, really bad. And that was also a reason why I thought I was, a double uh, decider because I've never really been mad at anybody uh, without you know liking them or or feeling sorry for them at the same time so and I don't really um, how would I say um, you know if I blame people I, I might blame people I kind of catch myself immediately like what did I do now how could I think like that that's not okay um, and uh, if I don't really appreciate something that a person is doing let's say I have a, a good friend and she was she had moved, lived abroad for a few years and she came home and was at home for a year and uh, then she was going to move uh, abroad again and uh, somebody else was like why is she moving again I'm really mad uh, I think he was a single decider and for me it was like of course I was a little bit sad that she was leaving you know um, but that was something I saw immediately and it's like she has the freedom to do what she wants she, um, I don't really care what other people do. It's not my business. I mean, people have their own lives and and motives and, and you know what I mean. So I thought I was a double decider, but I, what I now think is that I grew up in a very small community, quite religious and, uh, you know, people were um, spying on the neighbors, you know, that kind of uh, um, neighborhood when everybody knew everybody. And and uh, if you stood out, if you did, some, did something extraordinary, it was, kind of gossiped about, you know, that kind of uh, small um, uh, rural place. Uh, so to me, it was, um, that was something I wanted to, I didn't want to, to be part of, you know, uh, that was not okay. So maybe because my T is um, feminine and uh, uh, my FI is masculine. So I could always prob probably see them both. So. I, maybe I learned to double decide, uh, you know, some parts of the double deciding I learned quite quickly. So to me, it was like, if you do those things, you're really childish. That's something you would have learned uh, at the latest by the age of 13, you know, that's how it felt to me. But then the other part of the double deciding, I mean, not giving a, a, 
beep uh, about uh, you know people not caring what people think about you that's uh, much harder because that's kind of internal you know so since you're talking about this already let's talk about your fi uh, mm -hmm. masculine fi it's your fourth function um you said you're trying to learn how to double the side uh yeah. you have perhaps a little bit of some use to it because of the sleep mm -hmm. here um let's talk about your value system what do you have any like top five values that you have oh, top five. i can never answer those kind of questions no uh top five values hmm i'll have to but think I'll about give some examples okay and yeah it's yeah. easier for you so my top my fi top five values are freedom because i'm an ep of course i love freedom yeah um growth courage um authenticity and honesty those are my top five values so oh uh, yeah <laughs> i just realized uh that justice is one of those I, I didn't i would never have have said that previously but since i've been sleep processing myself now for for three weeks i realized justice is really really important okay and it's so, somehow it sounds a bit childish but but it's kind of like justice i have to explain it uh let's say uh, TE, justice, is kind of like everybody participates, everybody works together, you help each other. But if somebody has less strength than you, you know, or, or needs something more, perhaps needs rest more than you do, you know, then it's fair that I do more, you know. So it's not like uh, if you and I were working on something that we would have to do, you know, equal amount, and otherwise I would be mad at you. It's not like that. It's like, uh, who needs this more, you know? So it's really important. Yeah, so so that's something really important yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and also also freedom, but freedom to be yourself. That nobody um, nobody else chooses who you are, uh, and um, you know what you want to do, and these kind of things. So those are kind of um, so not to limit. Uh, not to limit other people and let them dream and let them do their projects and so yeah freedom of self-expression is, is that what you're trying to say yeah i would say so yeah. um so that's at least one or two um let's see yeah and also another one um i don't think it's good to um yeah all feelings are okay i mean it's okay to I'm not sure if this is values, but I'll, I'll say this anyway. It's okay to have, to feel a certain way about something. Uh, maybe you have to share something with somebody else and it feels bad because you would like to have it all by yourself, you know. Uh, it's okay to feel that way, but it's not okay to base your, you know, decisions on that. That's also, has also to do with justice, you know, that has to be um, uh, fair and equal, you know. Uh, but it's still okay to feel that way. I mean, you can be um, comforted and be, and you can you can express your feelings and you can't be blamed for that because it has to be okay, you know. And uh, I guess it has to do with that the feelings are are kind of my identity. It's kind I can't change them. If I have a certain feeling, it's uh, you know my emotions, my feelings. They are they are what they are and. Yeah, so those three I can think about. I don't know if that's values, but um, yeah. Is that enough for you? <laughs> Do you need yeah, more? It's, it's good more? enough. It's fine. It's good enough. Yeah. Um, okay, interesting. I don't relate with the justice one that much. It's, uh, yeah. But uh, I think that's like an EJ thing. Maybe, maybe. Or it could be like a personal thing. Like for me, I'm like, nope. I don't care if you need more energy than I do. You're doing the same work as me. You know, like that's kind of ah, like. Oh, that's horrible. That's not, that's unfair <laughs> to me because you have to, it's the individuality here also, you know, because if you and I, if we are different, uh, we can't uh, demand the same from both. And at some point, I think it might has, have something to do with, maybe it has come from, since I'm sleep savior, I always feel that I don't have enough energy, you know. Oh. And most of the work you have to share is STE work, and I don't like that. So it's kind of I get really drained and really tired very very easily. So maybe it's kind of oh, it has come pro, from that. You're yeah, my own stuff then. Yeah, probably because I see somebody else with like enormous uh, energy and resources, and and they just love the STE, and I'm kind of you know blamed, you know. Okay. So. Okay. 
I'll, I'll do more. Work. I'll do more work than the person that has less energy if they pay me more. You know. <laughs> okay. And it's hmm. fair. And it's fair. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I I disagree. I am setting boundaries now. <laughs> yeah. No, because if I was in that position, I'd be like, I have to think about it. I'm like, no, we get paid the same amount of money. So if you're gonna, pay, yeah. so if you want me to do more work, you give me more money to take more work from this person. Otherwise, yeah, but maybe this is more uh, among friends and family. You know, it's not really not at a workplace, no, because at a workplace you would have to maybe have some other kind of value then. I oh mean, yeah, so okay, I get what you're saying. If it's family, okay, I don't care, I don't mind. Yeah, don't mind. but yeah. if it's work, I don't like. You know, you know, you know give all those people a middle finger because you i i'm only doing the work that i get paid for but yeah exactly. if it's family, okay no i get it i i do that too like i i, I don't yeah, mind but think with, the thing with work uh it's really for me it's really hard to 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 think that way to say that well i stop here because i don't get paid for anything more as a teacher i don't really have a set you know uh weekly you know i don't have a my days uh, can be as long as you know they are because I just have to get my work done. Right, you know, enough. basically, yeah. Uh, but there is some, um, how would I say? Somebody has done some kind of calculation, some math about it. So there is something uh, to go after, but still the workload is much higher. You know, so I will have to do a bad job because otherwise I will do a lot of overtime and I won't get any pay for that. So I'm trying to learn to set my boundaries there that I don't get paid for it. You know, my kids at home, they need me more, you know, and that's really hard for me because I want to be this, you know, good girl, you know, typical I, 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 problem. I, I think for your profession, though, it's a little bit different because you do have a lot of intrinsic benefit that you get from being a teacher. And so yeah. that means, yeah, because like, you know, you have a lot of personal growth uh, that, you can't necessarily measure with money that you get from yeah. being a very good teacher and making sure yeah. that you go above and beyond what is the minimum requirement. It's kind of like a hobby also. What's that? Yeah. It's kind of like a hobby also, you know, it, yeah, it yeah. becomes. Yeah. And you like it too, right? So your, it's, your life mission or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not as, I think that your position personally, it's not black and white. It's like, it's more in a gray area. You know, different, yeah. I mean, there's, you, you probably have some teacher coworkers that, they're just there for a paycheck. They hate their job, right? So they. I, mean, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And they don't. Yeah. Care, they don't care if the students learn anything. They just teach. Yeah, and I couldn't yeah. be like that. For me, it's really, really important that they, you know, become as good as they can be. You know. Yeah. So I think that's that's probably also maybe the NF part. That, right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. The NF. So you're. Yeah. That's that's where your NF is kicking in. So I, I think yeah. that's, that's I think it's a little bit different. But but uh, that that's 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 uh, yeah it's fine. I think your FI is connected to it, so it's 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 different. Yeah, you're, you're getting yeah. something out of it besides money, so it's 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 still good. yeah. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's cover your last animal. Consume last. Double mask. Mm. Consume last. This is the, the the problem area. It's SF, so you're gonna have trouble with like the cool things, the cool vibe. Um, ah, oh, uh, popularity. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you know. So let's. And also gathering what's popular, um, and also what what you like personally, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Dave was talking about in one of his videos that he needs to give himself permission to consume what he wants to consume. Uh, yeah, that, I, I I relate to that one. I and, I did watch a movie uh, for ten years. I, I mean, really, and the reason was. Or I don't know why it's kind of like um, basically uh, after my my oldest daughter was born, I was kind of like on duty all the time somehow. You know, it was really hard for me. I couldn't even take a nap during the day or something like that. So watching a movie was kind of like I was never ready. I ne- I was never done with all the chores and and uh, um, just to sit down. I don't know. There's multiple layers here. Also, you know, going into your FI, you know. Um, really, you know, um, feeling your emotions, you know, and movies can be kind of like, you know, emotional. So I also had a, um, a few years now when I've, it's been hard for me to read books because I'm afraid there will be something horrible there, maybe some child um, who is um, killed or something like that. So I don't want to have my, you know, uh, I don't want to feel the emotions. I don't know, I'm scared of those things. So uh, I realized that watching movies, 
or listening to music is probably really good to me. That's something I, I should do. It's not like, um, you know, uh, health professionals would say that quit sitting in the sofa, don't, don't watch movies, it's a bad thing. But to me, it would actually be a good thing, I think. And uh, um, I used to watch uh, TV series and movies a lot when I was younger, before I had so many responsibilities. But since the responsibilities came, I couldn't do that anymore. I don't know, I, I, I can't give me the permission. It's kind of like, you know, so yeah. I really hate it. But only you can give yourself permission to do that. So no one else. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I understand all these things, but it's really hard because it's so wired into your brain, you know, you, you kind of. Yeah, for you, for EJs. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah, for me, of course, for me. It's cause, yeah. cause, because Dave was talking about like, oh, okay, I'll have to give, like he said something like giving himself permission to fly his airplane, his um, yeah. sea airplane. Yeah, his enjoying backyard. yourself. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's, it's nothing like, like your consume it's nothing like uh, groundbreaking it's nothing fancy it's like a simple thing like watching movies or playing video games yeah. or, or yeah. Um, you know playing sports or something or I don't know like 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 or not maybe sports but like something by, by yourself you know like something for yourself right it's we were talking about this with a friend and that for me it's even like um, enjoying food you know yeah, yeah. Uh, it could be that um, I have to take uh, a second time to be uh, able to enjoy first I just eat you know I don't know how to explain, but you know, I just have to finish the plate, you know, somehow. And then after that, I can have more and then I can enjoy. I know it's really funny. I get it. And I, I realized <laughs> this has to have something to do with this. And also, you know, going out um, uh, jogging, to me, that was kind of, uh, or go, going out for a walk. Uh, I would have had a dynamo or something, you know, to create uh, electricity at the same time or something. I would have to be, you know, useful some way to just walk there. It's kind of, right. uh, you know, sinful almost, you know? <laughs> so it's really, it's so, so hilarious when you hear it. I'm curious though, you're double masculine SF. So you are aware of what you want to do. You just don't do it. Is that yeah. correct, right? Yeah, so I'm what, really what, aware of what I want. So, and it's so really, what do you want? Tell, can you tell me what you want to do? Uh... All the stuff that you want to do. So SF also means yeah, oh, you're pushing means, me. you're pushing it's also me a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, what I want to do, I, I don't want to work. I want to just, um, uh, I want to have fun. I want to, um, I like to be outside, you know, like a walk, a walk in the forest, for instance. Uh, you know, watch movies, those kind of things is what I w want to do. And I want to uh, chat with friends, uh, have a nice dinner. Um, and then, of course, you know, I like to work on my own projects, you know, um, just get into flow, um, plan some really nice stuff, create some educational things, um, um, play the piano. I play the piano, by the way. Um, um, I need to have some projects. I, I can't just enjoy myself. It's not like I don't, I don't, I don't want to just, you know, sun bath or something like that. It's, I, I need to... Um, have some variation there so just uh yeah those kind of things and uh i don't want to be responsible for what other people want me to do you know i want to do my own stuff you know yeah. so that's kind of it my, my, my girlfriend is an intj double activated consume and all she yeah. does all day is stuff that she likes to do so she she's reading lots of kindle books she's watching so many tv shows watching so many movies she's yeah painting she's always drawing she's watering her oh oh well, that will be heaven everything that she is <laughs> everything that she's doing is what she wants she doesn't do she doesn't plan for the like you know what's logical to do in the future like, yeah it's yeah just, let, what everything that she wants to do that's fun it's just yeah oh and i don't want to have schedules and uh, i don't want to have appointments i don't want anybody to call me <laughs> i just want to you know i don't know uh you know read books also those kind of things and I think the only thing I kind of allow myself is is basically this ops thing, you know. Okay, so that's where that's the one thing, yeah. And and um, hmm, I went to the gym today actually. <gasps> so hmm. how did that feel when you went to the gym? I felt a little bit guilty actually. <laughs> so. Uh, and I went to the sauna also, and I was there for a long time, and uh, had a long hot shower, and 
Nice. I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this every Friday. Um, I even I pay for it. I have a monthly, you know, card, so uh, yeah. I have to use it. But it's, uh, yeah. I, I I mean, it's really embarrassing to say these things that it, I, I don't even allow myself to go to the gym. You know. Yeah, that's important. You need to work out. Like that's. A- yeah, I know, I know, but that's also a, a reason, you know, why I crash because I don't really take care of myself. You know, I always take care of somebody else, but not really not really in this ESFJ way. So it's not really, I don't think everybody will see it. You know, if I go to a party, for instance, uh, I won't be the one in the kitchen doing the dishes, you know, I won't do that. And and when everybody else is seeing that we have to help each other carry the plates away, I probably won't notice because I'm so um, immersed in, in some, uh, you know, intuitive discussion with somebody really deep, you know, and I, I kind of forget everything and zoom out. So. So it doesn't really show on the outside. You know, I kind of, I, I'm probably perceived as quite selfish in that way that I do my things and and uh, my house is not, you know, completely tidy or anything and quite messy actually, you know, these kind of things. So um, yeah, but I'm still kind of at duty all the time anyway. It's really I, strange. I, I, want, I want to go to your sexual modalities real quick before... Mm-hmm. Uh, because mm-hmm. I think it just ties onto what you were saying about like doing what you like and you're feeling guilty about doing what you like. Um, yeah. You said that you play the piano and you also went to the gym. Um, yeah. So piano is audio. And uh, you, er, earlier before we started the interview, you said you were listening to music. So you're doing some consume mm-hmm. or some SF. So, yeah. uh, so, yeah. you like, so I guess you like music and you like uh, kinesthetic, like body movements. So the gym. Um, yeah, and I dance. Actually, I, I used to dance folk dance a lot. Uh, right now I haven't done it for a few years, but that's also something I've done. Okay, so talk about that. Talk about audio kinesthetic. Talk about like, you know, learning through ear or enjoying things, uh, you know, from listening as well as movement, body movements. Mm. I mean, I thought I was visual because I kind of uh, imagine things visually in my head, I think. But I think that may, that's probably the NI build or something. It's really hard for me to, to understand. But it's hard for me to, to read text, for instance. Uh, at my previous job, they used to write a lot of... Um, uh, PMs, uh, long ones, and uh, they sent it by email, and it was really hard for me to, you know, get any information out of that. Of course, it's also data points, points, it's not connected to anything, it was really, I need the story. So I, I told them, for me, the best would be to have a podcast, so I could listen to everything uh, while I'm driving to work. And I can't use um, calendars, I mean, um, I can even have a calendar open, and there's something scheduled it doesn't tell me, it doesn't say me anything. Um, so I really have to, I have to talk about it. I have to hear it. So, um, so that's also, that's one thing. And music, um, you know, it just evokes a, a lot of emotions, uh, really strong ones. And uh, uh, an example was my mother died a year ago and uh, that was, of course, a really strong uh, experience. I was there uh, at her at her deathbed, and I listened to a song at the same time. Um, I had found that song, uh, you know, a couple of days before, and I was listening uh, to it. It gave me strength during that time, and I couldn't listen to it afterwards uh, because it was too hard. So every time it came uh, on the playlist, I, you know, I just uh, pressed stop, and and uh, you know, it was uh, too emotional. Uh, but a week ago, when it came, I decided I'm going to listen to it, and um, it threw me back into the situation. I, I could, I was there, you know. It was really, really. It was. It just connected me. It was like as if I was there by my mother's side again. So, but I think that's so common. I think other people also have these really, very strong feelings, strong emotions connected to music. I, I don't know. Nope. They don't. Oh, I thought everybody had that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, it, depends, it depends. So you're, you're describing sleep. Um, people uh-huh. high sleep can also visualize. Um, people with low yeah. sleep cannot. I, I have sleep last. I, I cannot visualize anything. But uh, oh. the, 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 the music, I have some access to kind of what you just talked about, like mm-hmm. like being in that situation. Yeah, I, I have some, but it's not as good as you. Uh, you're, you're, what, what's your modality? What's your sexuals? Your, Same uh, as you, MF. Okay, MF. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, so I have some access to audio like and feelings. But I, yeah. I don't get transported to that time period. I, but I can oh, remember. You don't? Oh. No, I don't. But I can I can remember how I felt in that moment. But I don't get transported yeah. to that moment. So I'm not in that moment. 
but I can remember how I felt in that moment, you know? Yeah. So it's a little bit different because I'm sleep last, so it's not complete. I don't have the okay. I don't have the complete immersion. Okay. But it was, you know, it was like a portal or something. It was really, really strong. And uh, and when I play, um, I started playing the piano. I, I played it as a child also, but then, you know, the classical stuff, you know, scales and stuff. But uh, I decided I'm looking at my piano at the same time. Uh, I was, um, I just realized I need to relax and calm down somehow. And uh, I started taking lessons and I wanted to play more freely, you know, without, um, what do you call it, notes in English? Um, anyway, so this, is, this became a way for me to relax. So I, I got into some kind of almost trance-like, uh, um, you know, state when I was playing the piano. And my husband usually came and asked me some mundane question in the middle of it. <laughs> and I would almost explode. Oh, actually, I explode. I, I'm <laughs> going to hide it. I explode. And, uh, well, I don't think he does it anymore. So <laughs> it's like he has to wait until the song is finished because it's kind of like, it also has to end you know it's a process it's something that's uh, doing something to me and it has to be you know it has a beginning and a middle and end you know and so it's um yeah so it's hard for you to consume but the moment you start consuming because it's double masculine nobody really, better no nobody better bother you because exactly you're, yeah you're that's it the... <laughs> yeah okay yeah that's good i like that one. <laughs> yeah and it's also uh um I have a, a different, yeah, a different situation. Uh, I have a, I'm a polyamorous, so I have a, a boyfriend and he's INTP. And uh, I think um, feminine sensory or something. Uh, I think the, the modalities are really the opposite. You know, I'm MF and he's FM. So that means uh, he will not reach out to me. He's not going to, you know, come and hug me or anything like that. And um, I like that. But if he would, you know, by mistake touch me, you know, if you just pass each other, it's a, it's a narrow place and he has to come by. It evokes some kind of a, a really, um, I don't know, animalistic instincts in me. <laughs> I kind of like transform to some uh, consume animal. I'm like, oh, you know, completely, um, um, you know, hug him and, and, uh, you know, it's really like an um, explosion in me if I just if it just touches me a little bit by mistake. So that's probably the same thing because the same thing happens with food or if I go into the forest and um, I take you know a few steps into the forest and suddenly I realize all the uh, the smells or you know it's so wonderful and I kind of stop in the middle of a sentence and I'm like, oh Jesus Christ. So that's that's how it happens. So, and people comment on it because it's so um, you know you can see it. On my, I express it a lot. So. Wow, that's crazy! It's double masculine SF could seem so intense. Holy crap! Like it's yeah, yeah, it's like that. And and usually when I'm driving and there's you know a beautiful sunset somewhere and I'm the one driving, I'm like oh, oh look at that, look at that, yeah. you know. So it's yeah. It's like an enormous wave just hitting me, you know? So it's yeah. really, huh. it's really that's, interesting. That's, that's interesting. I want, yeah. so you have it in a demon state. I wonder what it's like for someone that has it in a savior state, like those ESFPs with like MF, like double mask. Yeah, I think they can, I think they can. Are, 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 are they not state all the time then? Are they always like that? Like, oh, they don't like Oh, nobody could, nobody could do, it would be like being in an orgasm with all this all the yeah. time or something. That's not, that is but, not bad though. <laughs> that sounds like Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> I think, uh, what I think is, no. Oh, I think okay, okay, I, okay, hold on. They can control I, it. I, I, I think they don't because they're numb to it because they do it so much that they're, it, there's like, you know, if you do too, something too much. Yeah, yeah, for that's you, it. For you, you don't, because it's like not often that you indulge in that. that so when, it, when you do indulge in it, it's like, holy crap, you know, it's like. So, yeah. 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 I see. Okay, and, I see what's going on now. So incredibly strong. And yeah. And I thought I was a consumed savior. And that would have been um, any FI. And that couldn't explain, but I just uh, just ignored that fact. But it didn't explain all this, this sense, because this is a sensory reaction. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
yeah i don't have i don't, I don't relate to any of that stuff because that like i don't think i've ever that ever happened to me but like uh because i have yeah. my, my consumers and nf right so with someone actually like, actually i realize now I, i'm really happy i have i have a <laughs> consume last because this is really nice yeah it is, it is. so when you do consume, yeah. it's like amazing it's uh, absolutely yeah amazing. it's really amazing it's like i don't need any drugs or anything i can just uh, you know get high on just walking into the forest or something like that yeah 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 that's that's the, that's a good thing <laughs> yeah yeah that's, 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 that's interesting because um my consume is not s f it's not s so i don't have the same um reaction as you guys that has s as a consume for me it's n right so for me if i'm playing a video game that has like a really good storyline that's when i'm like yeah. i'm like yes this is so amazing like it's like that's yeah. when i get sucked in but it has to be like abstract it cannot be like can it be like a, a, a real physical thing? I don't get sucked in physical things. Like when I watch a video of people doing crazy mm-hmm. stuff, like jumping off a cliff and doing like somersaults, like I don't feel yeah. like, I don't feel anything. Like for me, I'm like- uh, Yeah, I have another realization. Uh, when I'm among people, uh, I'm usually perceived as quite um, extroverted, you know? Because if, let's say if I'm in, at a party, for instance, I, I talk, actually I talk about parties now, because first of, first of all, um, I kind of, um, I'm in the play mode, you know. But I guess I also get into this consume mode because it's kind of, you know, good food, uh, you know, something really interesting happens. You're usually in a nice place, you know. So I get all this, you really, you know, hyped, you know, up. So I'm, I'm kind of really wild. But I can do that only for a while. I get really tired. So. So when pe- people only see me at parties, they think I'm really like crazy. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. that doesn't happen often, though. So it's so they just they think it's always, but it's always that one, just at one time. Yeah, but I can be like that also at school sometimes, and um, some lessons are really hilarious because I become really wild. <laughs> also, and we have so fun. Yeah. So yeah, Fun's but good. I get really tired. I get really tired. I'm almost getting a hyped up now, also. So. <laughs> I was crash afterwards. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy that Dave and Shan type. It's not in a class yet, but they, they, they um, Dave told me he was. Uh, his name's Dan Lok. I don't know if you've heard of him, the Fu mm-hmm. Money guy. Uh, he lives in the same city as me, Vancouver, Canada. He's in trouble okay. now because he sounds like he's scamming a lot of people. But and anyway, uh-huh. um, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's also like he's kind of like he's uh same type as Dave. Sleep last, play consume. So consume less, but he's uh, MF also. So double masculine uh, consume like you yeah okay I, I just remember him talking about like creating his budget for the year and he spends like a ridiculous amount of money on fine dining like he needs oh. to like, delicious steak like like at mm-hmm. this specific mm-hmm. restaurant yeah like at least once a week you know and he's consumed last so he likes to consume that like nice delicious steak yeah you know, like once a week and- i also like to eat uh the same food over and over again so uh, i like uh, indian food and and um if I go there, I usually order kind of the same all the time because oh, I, want that, I want that same experience. Oh, okay. Hmm, I wonder, hmm, that's weird. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's because um, I would be so disappointed if, it's, uh, if it would be bad. You know, I kind of want that experience, you know. I don't know. Hmm. I, I find that people with the SF Savior like same um, function stack as you, they want mm. different. They want different. They don't want the same. They want different all the time. Like yeah, I want, yeah. like they go to the same restaurant, but they might try different food in that menu. You know. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could try. Um, I could order, you know, many small dishes together with somebody and try all kind of things. I could do that too, but, but you know, if I track what I do, I order the same thing, you know. And now I, I kind of, I probably only go to Indian restaurants also. So I don't really have much other food than Indian if I go somewhere. So, because I want to, you know, I, I want to be guaranteed that kick, I guess, or something. Yeah. Hmm? So in Finland, is it like, is, it, is, is there a lot of polyamorous relationships? No, no. I think uh, we're the first. Uh, I've ever known about. Um, actually, when I met my husband, we had been friends for seven years, and um, 
I had uh, I had had some bad experiences with uh, you know really jealous boyfriend and things like that, and uh, I just realized uh, maybe I don't want to have you know any husband at all. I just want to be by myself and. And then I had a, a colleague, a Russian colleague, who told me that uh, they have an open relationship. I was like, oh, uh, and I'd never heard about any, anything like that. And uh, um, there was nothing written in, in you know, newspapers or anything about uh, polyamory or open relationships. But at that point, I think that was how many years ago? Um, Anyway, it was a few years after I graduated, so I was quite young. And then I talked to my husband about this. We were out um, shopping. We were just friends. And I told him that, well, uh, I don't know if I want to have a husband. Maybe I could have a, a few men. <laughs> and, and he stopped and looked at me like um, I thought he was mad at me, you know, the um, single decider fear. Uh, now I'm expelled from the tribe, you know. And he was like, oh, wow, I've been looking for a woman who is, um, who is like that for 10 years already, because he had also had the same thoughts. Uh, I think he's an INTJ. So I guess we are kind of open to things that work, you know, already as at the age of 13, I was thinking that why do people divorce because somebody has cheated? That's ridiculous. Why can't you just have a contract that you can do uh, certain things a few times and then everything's fine, you know? And, and also, I guess the part that your emotions you can't do anything about them if you have some emotions you have them and that's it you know uh, so you just have to be pragmatic about it you know so I guess that's what it, where it came from uh, I haven't really lived any you know wild uh, swinger life or anything like that it's not you know not at all that way because for me relationships um or something serious, you know, you, I want to have deep relationships with people and uh, uh, deep connections. And I think it has something to do with security and, and you know, um, maybe I can explain it with this, the fear of the tribe somehow that, you know, um, forming really tight, close uh, relationships with people is, is kind of safer, I don't know. And um, yeah. So I remember we talked about it a lot with our friends and they thought we were really crazy. And, and uh, how would you ever want to have a relationship like that? But now it's really um, in the news uh, every other day. It's really changed the last five years, I guess. Yeah, it's getting, very, it's getting more, more, more and more common. Uh, yeah. Where people do that. So it's, it's, I think these days it's not, it's not as um, taboo as it used to be. No, no, no. I, actually, I, I talk about it at work also sometimes, and, and people are like, okay, and they think it's funny. I've never met anybody in real life, they say. And, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, I, I, I work in the fitness industry, right? So I have a lot of different mm -hmm. clients, and they tell me yeah. life stories and stuff. I'm like, like you know, so I, I've heard a lot of these before. Um, yeah. You know, um, I don't know if they did it openly or if someone's cheating. I'm not really sure what's going on, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. they say it so casually that I'm just like, do they have an arrangement or is this person cheating? You know, so that's kind of like, yeah. the thing. I'm always like wondering about, mm -hmm. like, I have one client, like he's from China and he, he comes mm -hmm. here and he has a wife and two kids. Yeah. He'll tell him he'll go to China and like play with some girls and then, you know. And okay. like, oh, yeah. It's like, does he just have like mistresses and stuff? Or is yeah. it? Like, but then I, I also heard that in China, it's like, it's like accepted that this kind of stuff happens. Uh -huh. So I'm like, yeah. it's just like something you don't talk about, but it's like, it's like accepted, like socially, that this happens. So I'm like, huh, I wonder if it's like that, you know? Um, to, to me, this was kind of hard because uh, it wasn't socially accepted. And it's not, I don't think it's really socially accepted either. And being a single decider, it's kind of hard, you yeah. know? Uh, but I think for us, it was more like, because we were both this way, you know, yeah. and it was kind of like our thing. So yeah, I, that way it was easier for me to, to um, give myself, a, you know, permission to be this way. Yeah, and it was also, I think it was a logical thing. It was also, I, I think this is really some anti thing for us. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not really- It sounds like an anti kind of thing also. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really funny because it turned out uh, 
we are uh, me and my husband we're in the same quadra we have the same uh, functions and yeah so so it turned out we are two nts <laughs> doing together and okay. none of us none of us have a sensory savior and and so it's you know it's really funny nobody takes care of the house you know <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> yeah yeah well me and my girlfriend are the same too we're both intuitive right so our house yeah. is like a, it's like a mess yeah, and I think I think all three of our daughters also are intuitive, so it's it's really <laughs> yeah hilarious. I mean, it's not it's not one hundred percent bad. It's just the sensory stuff is is, is bad. But, yeah, uh, but it's kind of like you know uh, when I kind of um, my consume is not seeing what needs to be done because I think he will take care of it, you know, yeah. and I think he has the same. So uh, we have to play the sen- Both of us would have to you know save the sensory stuff. But when none of us do it, we both um, shut our eyes for that. So, yeah. Mm. All right, uh, Janet, I'm going to have ask you two more questions and we'll wrap up the interview. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one is um, I want to talk about um, the decider's fear of judgment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about the fear of being judged by other people. Because the, 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 I think mm-hmm. it's a paradox because. I do think deciders are the judgmental one. So they fear being judged because they judge other people or themselves. Um, yeah. Because double deciders, they're like, eh, okay, whatever. It's not, it's not a big deal, right? But Yeah, I, actually, I, I don't really feel that I judge people, but I judge myself a lot. Talk, talk uh, about judging yourself then. Yeah, uh, I think um, the fear for, for me or my type is, uh, is not being a, a kind of kind enough for, or a good enough person uh you know i kind of have this feeling i have to be pure you know i I can't have any um evil in me or any you know bad spots so it's it's also really hard to see because i'm not completely you know nice all the time you know um and that's really hard for me to accept because sometimes i don't want to be nice you know but but still i have to be and i'm i'm um and to be liked, you know, it's really important to, to kind of be a nice person, to be, you know, as a teacher, I would like to, I would like to be perceived as a really, you know, caring and, and nice person and, and uh, uh, really warm hearted. And, and uh, that's what I demand of myself. So, you know, to be able to love everybody and, and uh, I mean, this is impossible. Nobody is this pure, but, but that's really what I demand of myself, you know, and, uh, I think also if you have masculine identity, masculine FI, you're really hard on yourself. So um, I can kind of, I can kind of see that nobody is this perfect, but I have to be the one, the first one on this earth that is perfect. Really, it's really hard, and that also means it's really hard to grow if you can't um, accept your bad sides. You know, if if uh, if I'm treating somebody bad. Um, and I can't uh, accept it, you know, because that would, um, how would I say, uh, you know, it's just too much to bear to to realize that I'm not perfect in that sense, you know. And also, if if um, if somebody, uh, let's say, let's say if my boss says, uh, Jeanette, can you come over to my my room uh, um, after this meeting, you know. The first thing that I think about is like, oh, what have I done? Have I made somebody disappointed? Have I, is there some student who is uh, feeling neglected by me? You know, immediately those feelings come, come and I, I think, no, it's probably not that, you know, probably it's something else. Probably there's a new student coming and they need to inform me, but, you know, I can't, you know, shut that out. It's like immediately the fear of, fear of uh, what have I done now? What have I done? And also if somebody's mad at me, because people do get mad, it's really hard for me to see that maybe they are wrong and I'm right because I'm always the one to blame, you know, so that's really hard. Oh, now I can't hear you. I think you have your yeah, mic. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if people think that way, like, um, like when your boss is calling you based on your type, you think you're yeah. in trouble based on that thing. That's your type. So if I'm, an e, I'm an EP. So if my boss calls me, I feel like, oh shit, did I break some rules that that I shouldn't have been breaking, you know, like, cause it's, oh, it, it's, a, it's yeah. easy, right. So for you, it's like, did I do something bad? You know, am I a mm-hmm. bad person? You know, or like yeah. if you're, maybe if someone's an IJ, it's like, Oh, was I not control? Did I, was not, or, not organized enough or 
or like you know like so, uh, so i'm thinking i'm like i wonder people think that way when when the boss calls them you know like <laughs> yeah you, know, you could ask that question of people and type them on based on that what do you think when your boss calls you to their yeah place? or like an ip like, oh is my boss gonna praise me how good i am <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know i don't know <laughs> all right cool um all right uh, last question for you Jeanette is uh, do you have any question for me before we wrap up this interview oh um yeah uh, the difference between uh, feminine and i and uh, you have you had feminine any right yes I feminine any, yeah yeah but the any and i what what's any like because now i i all my understanding of any is kind of gone and i don't have i'm a blank uh, it's a blank paper now help me uh, okay well it's my first function so it's not gonna be the easiest to explain but i'll try yeah, my, I know. i'll try my mm -hmm. best um so everything always reminds me of something that is not in like that is far away okay like like okay. seemingly far away that is so distant that you would you won't think there's any relationship but there is actually a relationship between those two um so i'm trying to think of a concrete example that how i can ex explain that it's kind of confusing um okay, I, I don't know any concrete example but um Okay, I'll 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 use the concept. The so and he's also gathering new concepts, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I like to go to a lot a lot of people's NIs and gather all their NIs, and I kind mm -hmm. of see which hand which one has the best NI, the best oh. the best organized concept. Because if you have something that is NI, and someone else has also their worldview NI. Then I yeah. can like see all the different NI. It's kind of like with FE, like or SE, like which is the best stuff or the best yeah. you know, best emotion for the situation, you know. But for me, mm -hmm. it's like the best idea, you know, which is the best idea. Because I'm comparing like the NE, right? So I know like OPS is the best like personality typing system because that like I'm using my NE to kind of gather all the other systems. So at the moment, yeah. OPS is the strongest one, but I'm not sold into it like being like the the best forever. I think it's the best yeah. for now. Um and I don't think anything's gonna topple it for a long time because it's so well done. But for now, it's the best. Um, yeah. Maybe some some at some point in the future, you know, some you know DNA test will like destroy that or something. I don't know. But anyways, um, so so that's that. Like um, so like so a, a good example for that is like when people tell me about their life. So for my consume is NF, right? Um, yeah. So pe pe people tell me, okay, how should you live your life? And then they have like different methods and ways that they decide to live their life. So I have a friend yeah. who wants to live his life nine to five. I go to work, you know, 8.30 a.m. or 9 a.m., finish work at 5 p.m. and then have a set routine every day until I retire, okay? And then, you oh. know, every every year I get two weeks vacation or three weeks vacation. And for those two or three weeks, okay, I'll go on a holiday somewhere, okay? You know, like a typical mm -hmm. holiday, like a family, yeah. weekend, you know? Yeah. So that's like one life. That's like one concept, one worldview, right? Another yeah. worldview that I know is this one guy, I have a friend, he's a, nope. He wants to forever be a bachelor and he wants to um, have multiple girlfriends and he mm -hmm. wants to, uh, you know, just have complete freedom to live um, a hedonistic life. Yeah. And, um, and that's fine for him. And that's what he's doing. He's always dating like different girls and yeah. he's always okay. traveling to different countries. He still has decider problems. He's a decider. So he's an EJ. And yeah. he, uh, he's an ENTJ jumper, I think. And he, uh, you know, he's always like, he, he really had to work on his FI, like really hard. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was the, the thing he had the hardest trouble with. And late, that, that's when he decided that that's what he really wanted was like, I want multiple girlfriends and I wanted a hedonistic life. But when he's around people, he's always doing things for other people. He, he's always still yeah. doing the EJ role, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why he has to spend time by himself so, so he can center himself. Otherwise he'll forget himself. So and it, yeah. but he'll, he'll just remind himself, he has mass on FI, like, okay, that's what he wants multiple girlfriends and and that's that's pretty much that's his life multiple girlfriends and video games that's all he cares about mm -hmm. right um i'm like okay cool so that's another worldview right and then another worldview and i have another friend he's an I intj um um yeah he says i just work all day i don't uh, i just work all day once in a while he'll have a girlfriend but if the girlfriend gets in the way of the work he'll fire the girlfriend and, yeah uh, and, uh, and <laughs> just focus on work because work comes yeah. first that's all he cares about is working, 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 working. Okay. And, it, you know, so I'm like thinking all these different worldviews. I'm like, okay, which is the best? Which one do I want for myself? You know, 
And then for me, my ideal worldview is I live in three different countries and uh, I bounce between those three countries. Because for me, the, the different places matter a lot to me. I don't want to mm. be in the same place. I want to be a different place. I don't need different yeah. people. I like the same people, but I don't like, I like the same people, but different location. So I don't know, it's kind of weird, you know? Okay, my yeah. Girlfriend, my girlfriend doesn't want touch stuff. My girlfriend wants to stay in one place and be solid in one place. And I'm like, no, I don't want that, you know? Because I know myself, I've, I've, uh, I've traveled to 89 countries around the world and I know yeah. which country is the best. And it's not Canada. Uh -huh. I live in Canada and it's not Canada. Um, I, I want to be, one of the three countries I want to live in is Canada, but it's not, it's not the only place. Like the three countries I want to live in is Canada, Colombia, and Malaysia. Those are my favorite. Okay. Countries. Oh, that was in, an interesting. Uh, yeah. Colombia. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I love Colombia. I've, Have I've, you been to Costa Rica? Not yet. No. No. Go there. <laughs> I think. Uh, Is this in you the will, IG uh, box, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know about the IG box. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, when I was um, uh, 19 and I, I went to study, uh, I joined the students uh, uh, for this group and uh, the group went to Costa Rica and I couldn't afford to go because, you know, I was just a first year student and it was really expensive. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, well, maybe I'll they'll travel some other years. And, and actually they didn't travel that much, but it would bother me all the time because everybody was talking about this Costa Rica. And also my husband went there and it was really a big thing. Mm -hmm. So when I lived in Houston for a year, uh, I had to go abroad, you know, for visa reasons. Uh, outside North America and then I decided I'll go now after uh, something like 17 years or something like that no about 10 years or whatever uh, now I will go to Costa Rica so I went on my own and uh, I was there for an Easter holiday so I guess it was in the I IJ box yeah <laughs> or EJ box yeah you consumed you did consume you you did something that you wanted so that that's good yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah well I think I consume a lot, so it's really, yeah. Somehow I, I'm. Um, you have a consume swing that's happening. Like it's, yeah, it's yeah, but, but the, the, to understand the type and to to really think, uh, you know, it, was this typing correct? You know, so that's something um, that I've been thinking so much about. So, uh, do you think it was correct? <laughs> that's probably a question. I, I, I think it's correct that. because. Um, I know I did notice that people that has double masculine under last animal can use it. Yeah. So double masculine sleep. Yeah. And even in my typing video, when David Chan sent me their audio, they said, "Can you can use fifty percent of your sleep?" And they're like, "You like what the hell? Like you you have you're using it." They're like, "We wanted yeah. to type you as consume last, but you you're using because you're using sleep so much, but yeah. you're not. Your sleep last. You're info dominant. <laughs> you know." And I'm like, "Yeah." So. I think the double masculine definitely helps you use your fourth animal. Yeah. Like, there is a swing when it does happen and you have a massive awareness of what's happening. Um, yeah. Like you consume, you have, you have massive awareness of it. You might not do it as much as you, sh you should be doing, um, mm -hmm. but you're still doing it when the swing does happen. You know, so for me, my yeah. double swing, SF sleep swing happens. I will use it and I am quite aware of what it is, you know? Yeah. So, um, and the thing is, uh, you know, when you really, when you read uh, the archetypical ENTJ, uh, the CEO type, you know, <laughs> that's not at all me. And and it's kind of like you have this, I have this TE which is constantly activated. So I always know what I should do or what I want to do and I want to finish stuff. You know, I really yeah. am uh, in stress when things are not done already. Yeah. And but then I have this sleep savior. So I have so little energy and I, I just can't do it. You know, so it's like I see this all the time. And and then um but I, I can't forget, I can't you know ignore the FI. So it's kind of like, it's, all, it's almost a little bit glass lizardish, you know, my type. It's not glass lizard, but it's, I, I understand the, the problems they might have, you know, when you can, yeah. Well, I think in your situation, um, I'm trying to think now, hmm. I, I, so I have feminine NE, so my 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 explanation just flew away. I hate it so much, it's so annoying. But um, you were saying about uh, lacking energy. So you're lacking energy because your play is demon. But um, I think if you were to do things by yourself, you would have more energy. And the reason why you don't have more energy to do things for yourself is I don't think you have a you don't have a a constant exercise routine. 
Um, yeah. Because exercise gives you more energy. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to work out, I mean, Kendrick gave me permission to exercise. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of have Sorry. to. I mean, I did notice that during the pandemic when I increased my cardiovascular exercise, yeah, I did notice that I was able to put out more YouTube videos. And now I'm doing, and then I started doing less cardio and then my YouTube output went down. And then when I started doing more cardio again, my, my work output went up again. So there yeah. is a direct uh, relationship between exercise and having the energy to do things. Um, with that being said, though, it's a little bit different still for you because you're play demon and I'm play savior, right? So in your case, um, because you have sleep higher than play. So even after you exercise, your energy is not going to be high towards people. It's going to be high towards your own project, which is going to be weird yeah. because yeah. You're at least I'm happy. I'm happy and content somehow and, and kind of uh, calm and, and uh, you know, all if I had any anxiety, it's gone, you know, so yeah. exercising yeah. Is, is really good in that sense. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, 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 but I mean, what I can do is I, I could think about my things, you know, for hours. So yeah you know but you can also blast your blast first so you can actually execute but you're going to execute based on your own personal project so you do have the sleep right so the sleep is going to be the guiding light that tells you what project you need to work on and then your blast is going to do it but you can't do it if you don't but have the blast it all, the, the blast also focuses on you know um just uh, how would i say unimportant things you know like uh you have to check your email you have to you know it kind of like it, it's like the TE will will just um, latch onto anything, and no matter if it's a sensory thing or if it's a, an intuitive thing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't care. So it can see everything, and um, the only way I can kind of tone the TE down is is by ignoring things. You know, I can have a messy room, and I just close the door, and it's messy for half a year. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean not much you can do that it is what it is for like that yeah yeah the sensory so but i, I mean I, like i said that your sleep is going to be the guiding light because that's that's where you're going to mm -hmm. derive what's the priority yeah you said, when you blast you can do useless things too right but you, you don't have to if you use your sleep first you exactly sleep. that's a realization that's what i've been trying to do now and i really sometimes have to sit down for you know 15 minutes 20 minutes before i can really calm down and, and really do the sleep prioritization priority, priority. Yeah. I can't say the word <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, you have to say so yeah. Because I I have um I have double activated play, so I'm always doing things for other people too, and so I have like very EJ ish problems where yeah. I'm doing too many things for other people, and and I, that no one reciprocates, and I feel resent resentful that no exactly. one reciprocates because yeah. I'm helping everyone, and no one helps me back. So I like. I now know to use my sleep to set boundaries, like really hard boundaries. Yeah. So I've set a lot of really hard boundaries during the pandemic. Like I have mm -hmm. a friend, um, he screwed us over. He didn't, um, we played basketball one day and then next week we're supposed to play basketball, but he didn't show up and he didn't even tell us he's not going to show up. So, yeah. so he's an IP. He looks like one of the people I interviewed, ISTP. So I, yeah. I, I banned him for one year. I'm like, you're banned for one year. I told him that, right? Yeah. And oh. I said, the only way you can get out of the ban is if you make a video apology, you know? <laughs> Oh and my then, god! And then, and then I gave him, I gave him a script that he needs to read for the apology. <laughs> and then, um, and then I said, and, and it's not just me. I used the tribe against him too, right? So my other friends also banned him. So he's yeah. uh, banned by the tribe. Uh, he's trying to negotiate though, which is stupid. So I said, okay, you're trying to negotiate two year ban, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's a deadline now for your video. If there's no video, you have to serve your two years. I don't care. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In, in you're, my good head, setting, you're good at setting boundaries. Uh, I mean. No, in my head, uh, he's already dead. Like I'm like I don't care. Yeah. He's not my friend anymore. He's been my friend yeah. for 25 Wait, years. But that sounds like, uh, I mean, for not showing up at playing basket. I mean, it, what, uh, it sounds kind of like a small thing or uh, maybe I didn't it's not, it's not. So it sounds harsh because it's just a basketball thing. But yeah, he's been, I've known him since I, uh, I've, I've known this guy for 36, uh, 26 years. And this, yeah. is not, this is not, it's it's not that one thing that he did. It's all, oh, yeah. all the things that he did. Yeah, I understand. Years. I understand. And that was yeah. just a trigger. It was the final one, yeah. Yeah, yeah he did a lot of messed up things. So, but this is like now it's like okay, I'm putting my foot down now. No more, you're yeah. out. You know. So, um, this is not the first time I banished him. I banished him before, and then he after yeah. I banished him for I banished him for four years before. So when mm -hmm. he came back, um, he started behaving properly for like mm -hmm. a, a year and a half. But then he went back his mm -hmm. old way. So I'm like, okay, you're out again. You know. So yeah. Um. So. Interesting. 
But anyways, I want to go yeah. back to any questions yeah. we kind of got 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 off yeah. tangent. So I have a better example yeah. for you now because like I was thinking earlier, I'm like, what example should I give you? So mm -hmm. I'll give you a very concrete example for how NE works. Okay. So yeah. NE is an observing function, and, I'm, and the observing function for NE is used to gather patterns, right? So mm -hmm. I can use it to gather a pattern for myself, like um, you know, uh, for myself because it consumes also self awareness about yourself. So pattern for myself, but I can use it to gather patterns from other people. So in terms of pattern for other people, um, how I use it recently was I worked for the Canadian federal election and mm -hmm. last minute I got promoted to a supervisor position. So yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't a supervisor when they hired me, but I became a supervisor like a week before the election. Um, yeah. And it was my first time ever working as a supervisor and I, I have a staff of 12 that is working under me. Uh, yeah. So my job is to manage a specific position called information officer. And these people, they've control the traffic of people coming into the hotel to vote for the election to who the next president yeah. of Canada will be. Okay. So the whole night, um, I came up with a system, an NT system to mm -hmm. how I was going to organize the thing. Obviously, as you know, plans never go according to execution because, you know, mm -hmm. there's always chaos when, when yeah. life happens. Thankfully for me, NE is very good with chaos. NE is like yeah. chaos. Um, and it's the most chaotic function ever. So yeah, the Canadian federal election is the most chaotic thing I've ever seen in my life. It was like people were okay. <laughs> people were fighting in a lineup, screaming at each other. Uh, yeah, just idiots parking their car, blocking like cars in the parking lot. They'll park their car, put the hazard light on, run in to vote, blocking three cars that are parked. You know, and blocking the traffic. You know, so it's the guys should come chaotic. to Finland and see how we vote. No. <laughs> huh? Everything is so organized here and calm. So yeah. No, no. no. I, this is this is Canada, and here it's very multicultural. So it's not you're not just dealing with the 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 the, the people you're dealing in Canada. The, every single race is here, so there's it's not weird to see like black people, Asians, Indians. Yeah. Everyone is here, and they all bring their culture with them, and they're also also the good and the bad of each of those culture, right? So yeah, you know, sure. Asians are shitty drivers, and uh, <laughs> and so a lot of Asian people live in my city. <laughs> And they're doing yeah. the, all the all the bad shitty driving, and, and the person that did that stupid parking was an Asian woman, right? So it's like you know, so it's all the Asian people that's doing the bad the bad driving, and then yeah. Uh, so yeah, people are just fighting in a lineup and stuff. But also because I have to deal with my staff, um, so after I allocated the position, I did notice some things because I luckily I know all OPS, so I can kind of get, gauge what type this person is, right? Yeah, <laughs> I have one. So I have one guy. He's very angsty. Like he's an angsty teenager. He's like an angry teenager. And like when I whenever I tell him to do something, he's like, I don't want to do this. You know, like kind of like stuff, right? Yeah. And I have another guy also like always rolling his eyes when I try to like tell him to do something, right? Oh my god. Yeah. <clears throat> now, my goal for the my my goal, my NF goal for the election, my purpose mm -hmm. was to empower the team. I want to make sure that I am completely worthless at the end of the day. Like they they don't even need me, that the system will work itself yeah. out. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And I want to, I want to make sure that I fully trust each staff that they can do their job right and they don't need my help. That they're gonna be okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And so if whenever people made a mistake, I didn't even correct them. I just kind of watch them. I'm like, try again. That's all I say. Try again. Mm -hmm. I want them to fix themselves, right? I don't, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, them relying on me. Like I don't need to feel important. I don't care, right? Um. So. During that day, like I, I did notice a few problems with some of the staff, and I was watching their behavioral patterns, right? Because I'm using my Annie to watch their pattern. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed that one of the angsty teenager, I, I put him beside the door, beside this girl, and I can tell he likes that girl. And but I can also tell based on the pattern that I've gathered that the girl likes him only as a friend. So she likes him, but only as a friend. Yeah. Um, and but during the day, he's kind of like really rebellious he doesn't want to like listen to orders and he just want to do his own thing however i when i have to send people on breaks i send them in pairs so i send him to go on this break with that girl uh mm -hmm. so that you know he'll be happy and yeah. after the break is finished he listened to everything i said <laughs> no problem no he listened and not only yeah. did he listen to everything i said because he had time to spend with a girl he yeah. he he also uh step up and was able was was willing to take a harder role um yeah so he went from someone that was you know not pulling his weight to someone that do you think he wanted, imp wanted to impress uh, her or something um i think it's a combination of i don't think i don't know if he was trying to be happy her. and yeah 
I, I felt like he got empowered. Like I felt like, yeah. like okay, he, he, I think he, I, I got his trust. Like I think he felt like I was on his side because I, I said yeah. I'm going to break with a girl. Uh, number one and number two, mm-hmm. the girls also friends with him, so like they, they were both happy that they were going yeah. to break together. Um, but when I when I gave him a harder role, I think he's also di, so he felt like oh I have a cha- he trusted me with like a challenge. I gave him a yeah, role exactly. where he he has like a lot of autonomy and he has to take uh, like make a, a very important decisions and he mm-hmm. loved it and he did a really good job, you know. And so so oh. so 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 he got three breaks and all three breaks assigned with the girl. He was happy. And then during the work, I gave him something challenging enough to stimulate him and to give trust to him. So he was yeah. good. The, another guy, I was another guy that was working for me. He was even worse than this guy. He was uh, th- this guy's not bad. Later on, like when once I got his trust, he was a good. He was really good. Yeah. Another guy, yeah. He, he just had like a really bad attitude. I think he was play last. Like he hates mm-hmm. he hates people, and he 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 couldn't be bothered. I don't. He I think, I'm pretty sure he was just there for for the money, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. And like I said, always rolling his eyes when I tell him stuff and always like mm-hmm. going, like when I tell him something, he's like, just like really yeah. piss, 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 yeah. poor, atti- piss poor attitude, right? <laughs> um, one time he asked me to, to take his break. I'm like, uh, I, someone has to finish the break before you can go. And he's like, okay, you know, and I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me move things around. Maybe I can do something for you. So I, I set him on his break and then he passed out on the couch. He, he literally fell asleep. Like too, oh. many, too many people and he can't handle it. I think he's an IP, probably, yeah. an, I, probably an ISFP or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like he, he, he has last, yeah. really last ISFP probably, if I have to guess. Yeah. I guess. Put this hoodie on, fell asleep. Okay. And then he woke up and he's still grumpy, you know, still a grumpy guy. But I, I remember I acknowledged him and I, I said to him, you know what, man, you have it harder than anyone else here. You have it the hardest. And when I, when I said that to him, it, it like validated his emotions. Yeah. And 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 suddenly, and he had, he cracked a, a, a tiny smile, just a small one. That's the best. That's yeah. the best I will ever get from this guy because the whole day that's he's grumpy. Yeah. That, that, that tiny smile was the best. It's good enough. Mm. And he started working really hard and he started helping his coworkers. And his coworkers even said he was a rock star. He really helped me out. I'm like, boom, you know. Uh-huh. And it, and he felt good about himself at the end of the day. And um, and it's because I was using my patterns to kind of gather what they're like. I'm like kind of like. Yeah. Okay, this guy is like this. This person is like this. This person is like this. Like I, I had this Indian guy working for me. I'm like, this guy doesn't listen very well, but he works hard. So where can I put him in a position where he doesn't need to listen to anyone and he can still do his good job well, you know? Oh. So I'm like just gathering patterns, like behavioral patterns from people, right? Yeah. Um, and based on the behavioral patterns, then I'll make a decision. So I'm talking about my NETE right now, right? Mm. But for any FI, I know for myself, I'm not going to function if I don't get a chance to eat also. So yeah. I want to make sure I also get a break because I'm also a double decider, right? So yeah. my, my, my other supervisors, they're telling me, I'm telling them, hey, you guys need to go on your break too, guys. You guys are working hard. They're like, no, we don't have time for, for a break for ourselves. I'm like, you guys cannot do that. Like, I'm like, if you don't take a break, you're useless because you don't have enough energy to do your job exactly. well. So even for me, I know that pattern about myself that I won't be able to do a good job if I'm absolutely dead. I'm going to be in a grumpy mood. I'll pass a grumpy mood to my staff. My staff will be grumpy because I'm grumpy. And then they're not good. They're going to be grumpy to the people who are voting. And, you know, it's a chain of reaction of negative emotions. Yeah, of course. Right? These are really interesting. I mean, uh, the way you handle these people. I mean, as a teacher, I, of course, have, you know, groups to handle all day. You yeah. know, so uh, what I, I know I do is I kind of pick ideas. So when I, I will probably use your ideas and uh, next week already you know so it's kind of like because I can also see that uh, um, some of my students are kind of similar to what you describe you know and and that way um, I don't know so I usually steal ideas from people all the time and I thought that was any because I do that all the time but maybe that's the masculine essay I don't know you know they said it was it's aggressive you just uh, (laughs) I mean you know, <laughs> but I don't steal things, but I, yeah. yeah. Well, S-E and N-E, they both gather, gather information. Yeah. So information could be a concept or a fact. I mean, I can gather facts yeah. too with my N-E, right? Uh, you know, I just have to put it in my S-I, make sure it fits in the S-I. But with, with N-E, yeah. I can be creative with it. Like I can, I can, uh, I can, I can like cre- create something. I can create something <laughs> original in the, in the moment because N-E is in the moment, right? Yeah, but I can do that too. I, 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 it's it's really amazing. Sometimes I had a, a lecture and I didn't I did a lesson and I didn't plan it so much and or at all. And uh, the principal came and said, "Well, t- today, Jeanette, you have a guest who is going to uh, watch you. I mean, and uh, you know, 
study or somebody's just want to learn from you or something like that. I was like, oh, oh okay. Uh, I have my lesson in five minutes and I haven't really planned what to do. So I usually went uh, to the restroom and closed the door. And to me, it felt like um, I pushed some button or something and there were lots of colors and lots of things going on. And I just uh, closed my eyes for, uh, you know, 30 seconds or something and I let the machinery go. And suddenly I had uh, um, I had a solution and I could create uh, this uh, amazing uh, lesson for the students, which was really some, you know, extraordinary stuff, you know, in, in 30 seconds, you know, because I didn't need any requisite or anything. I could organize it in another way. So that's something I, I, I do all the time. I, it takes a lot of energy. Uh, I can't do it all the time because uh, you, you have to have this focus and you have to have the kind of pathway. I mean, I guess that's the NI, the pathway. I mean, um, um, a course is kind of like a story, you know, so I can't have, have these random um, things, but they have a meaning and they have a place in that story, you know, the storyline. So this is really intense. And I also use the same, I think when, when I teach uh, programming and if I, if somebody has a problem, uh, I can come there. Maybe I can't even do the code myself, but I have to, you know, find the problem, you know, so I sit down and I kind of look at it and um, there's something kind of um, really intense going on in my head for a few seconds. And, and then I just know the prob what the problem is. I don't know. What is, what's it's, that? It's, it's, we're doing different things, though. I mean, you like you went to the washroom to do it. I did mine in, on the spot. I don't need to go to the washroom. Like I, I like I, I saw it and then I, I linked it. So yours is a little bit different from mine. Yours is like yeah, but I can also uh, I, sometimes I told uh, stories to my students like off the top of my head, like uh, um, let's say um, you know stories to, to which they can you know yeah. meditate or something. Some had them to close their eyes, and it was really something strange. Some some egg floating in the air, and blah blah. And it was always different, and just off the top of my head like that. It's not something I I have to plan or think about. So I I I think you understand. I thought it was any because it was kind of so sudden and so quick. So well, you have double activated ni, so it's gonna be very quick. <laughs> you know, very good. It's gonna be your 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 yeah. your usage of it is gonna be very like yeah. And I guess. I guess the feminine. It's flexible. I, also. It's flexible. Yeah, yeah, and, and perhaps it's kind of like um, <clears throat> the end goal is kind of like a little bit fussy. I have the end goal. I'm going somewhere, but it's kind of like taking these small, um, small steps. Kind of, it's like only folk. I mean, it's to me, it feels like I'm always going in the right direction. I'm always going towards my goal, kind of. But it's it's like um, I don't see the whole path, you know. I, I always can't really even say what is my goal. I can't really state it out loud like my husband can, you know, this is what I plan for the kids. I want them to be like this or that in 20 years or something. You know, it's not at all like that. It's more like a vision. And then, then I create things that kind of get me closer, but it's not a straight line. Well, yours is N-I-S-E, right? So you have the, the N-I plan. And then the SE yeah. is like the, the facts to support that this plan is valid, right? Yeah. That, that's that's N, that's that's N I um N I S E. Um yeah. N E S I is a little bit different because S I I can see all the micro little tiny steps to get to the intuitive goal. And oh, I, really? I, I and every single tiny steps I trust will work. And, and during the election, that's exactly what I did. Like every single step I trusted. Like even the night before, I already I already thought about the, the S I, right? Like so. The election was uh it was two floors first floor and yeah. second floor second floor is it's it's two flights it's four flights of stairs actually so it's actually technically the the, the fourth floor so you have to climb yeah. four stairs to get there um, oh. so so the layout of the hotel was there's the there's the there's the outside where people were lined up outside and then because it's covid so they have to wear the mask and stuff right and yeah you go inside into the lobby of the hotel and there's an elevator for people that who are special needs, they, they have a wheelchair or they're uh, seniors or something. And then mm -hmm. there's a staircase for everyone else that can have no problem walking up four flights. Yeah. And then there's the, the the floor where the election is being held. There's three ballrooms. And so I'm talking about all the sensory now. Three ballrooms, three different rooms. Okay. Yeah. The, the middle room is the biggest and there's two smaller rooms on the side. Um, and then there's a hallway to one corner where people can line up. And there's another hallway here uh, right in front of the three ballrooms where people can line up. Okay. So... Um, what I did was I organized 
three of my staff to cover each of the door and then mm -hmm. three staff to cover each of the lineup one staff to go stand in front of the elevator and the staircase so that when people come out they he, they can tell the person to go in the right lineup okay yeah and then there's i have someone in the lobby that will tell the person to either take the elevator or the stairs to go up and tell them who they will talk to when they get to the stop to the stairs i have a person also outside the, the hotel door the hotel that will tell them to go in based on which polling station they're going to enter which which ballroom um yeah and then i have some staff that i also designate to help that guy and i have two staff that are called floaters so, they, so you thought about this beforehand you mean everything thought... yeah it, well i was in bed i was like i'm yeah. gonna have two people that's gonna be the floater and the floater means they're gonna cover the breaks of every of all those positions there yeah, right exactly. so I, I thought about like i already organized this all in my head but then when i got there is yeah. it also te involved because we both have te savior so but it's SI, it's like step by step by step by step by step. Like yeah. everything, it, it, it's sensory too. Like I, I I knew the exact position where they're gonna stand, you know, like the exact oh. spot in the hotel, you know. And, and you remember that? Everything, without... yeah. Everything, yeah. If you have mas masculine sensory, yeah. I have SI I Ford. Know. It's Ford, yeah, exactly. but I can use it because it's because because I have blast um savior, you know. So you have sleep savior, right? So you have FI in a savior state, kind of, kind of. Yeah. And I have SI in my blast so i have a half of it in a savior state right exactly. so yeah. um so so yeah i i planned it all in my head so when, when i was giving uh, directions it was very specific i'm like your job is just to do this and it's very sensory you take this person to here okay yeah. it's like all physical it's not abstract it's like you know exactly. like mm. and, uh, but i tweaked it too because when i got there i'm like okay but i need to know which person to put on those spots right so when i got yeah. there you know three people told me like oh yeah we work already in the election i'm like okay great i'll put the veterans on the on the key roles because they already know what they're doing and i also yeah. know i also think okay you know what? a lot of people they don't like change so i don't know if they're an oi or oe i have no idea so what i'll just do is put them in the same role that they were doing when they were when they did the election earlier so there's no hard feelings yeah. right because if you're an oi and i start changing things for you you're gonna get upset so i'm like okay i'm not gonna do that just stick you yeah. in the same role later on yeah. i can ask them if they want to do something different which i did and and mm -hmm. I, one of them was okay with it like just one of them but that's okay you know, i'm okay mm -hmm. with that yeah, and then the new people is the, the ones I move around because they're new. They don't know what to expect, right? They don't have no, they, have, mm -hmm. they don't have any OI yet, so they 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 don't know. So you know, mm -hmm. so, so I can. It's like a free slate. So that's what I did. And then later on, I, obviously, I, as I mentioned to you, I, I think I, I think I can't organize these kind of things. Actually, uh, I remember at school once we had a test. We we, we just um, uh, we built something and we were going to measure some temperature, and we had like I, I stole it. I know, <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, the students had, you know, lots of devices to test, you know, so it was kind of a big set and we had to put water into this. It was kind of bottles and, uh, uh, it wasn't going to work unless we were really quick enough, you know, and to scale something up for me is really difficult. So I knew I, and I hadn't planned it beforehand either. So when I was sitting there in the classroom, I just, I just couldn't organize it. So I was like, Hmm. How do I do this now? And I knew there was a student there. I guess she was an INTJ, and I knew she was very organized. So I said, "Well, I know you can fix it. Fix this." So she got the chance to organize the whole thing, and she could do it, you know, almost on the spot and organize. So everything went smoothly. But I could never have done that. I can see what we need, and I can come up with a funny idea and so on. But to to do what you just described, you know, it, it doesn't really work. It could be an ISTJ also. They're really good at organizing the the physical the physical stuff could be but i think she's intuitive so yeah but maybe yeah, but it's tricky some 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 ice teachers have masculine ne right so you, you could get tricky. yeah 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 of course that's the <laughs> See, again, you, you can't really type based on it's, it's hard it's hard because when you have masculine ne their intuition is active right so it's like you know so yeah um but uh yeah i remember too when i was in the election it was uh, <laughs> um I'll give you two funny stories. So, like, I was in okay. an election, and I was there was an e, there was an EJ with masculine DE, and okay. could, and consume last, and everyone and and she was so bossy because uh and, mm -hmm. and she was she was stepping on everyone's foot, right? I'm like, oh my god, she, you're pissing everyone off, and because yeah. and she, because she's consumed last, she thought her idea was the best. I think mm -hmm. she I think she's TI at the bottom. I think she's Effie at the top. Yeah, and uh, she she said she wanted to do things her way, and her way was completely shit, right? Because it's TI, right? Mm -hmm. And no offense to the TI people, but you know it doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to uh, TI, is good for building um, a framework like a car or something.
But when you're doing mm. an election, when it's moving in real time, the TE is better. Yeah, when it has to do with many people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TI is good for like like computers or something. Yeah, but not yeah. not for this stuff. No. So she shoved all the tables in one group. The head office people came. She's like, "Who did this? This is wrong. Everything's messed up now." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like, and, <laughs> and that woman, she is like, you know, major people problems, right? And she's always like, I can tell when I look at her, she she feels threatened. Like someone is doing better than her or like upper supervisors like doing better than she is like she's mm-hmm. always comparing herself to other supervisors like wh- when i'm when i'm um, talking to, the, to my staff she's I, I can see her like staring at me she's like it's just like like giving me like like just observing my every move i'm like, I'm like, stop being, I'm like in my head i'm like can you stop being weird you know i'm just like i just want to do my job and like go home you know like i just I don't you know stop being weird you know yeah and she's like observing me and then she's looking for the popularity like the fe so, yeah. so at first she was bossing me around because I looked young, uh, but mm-hmm. like later on when she noticed that all my staff likes me, yeah, and she also had to like me because yeah, I, of course, I, I, of I, course. I want yeah. that I want the, the FE popularity game, right? And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, you're so weird. Um, but so another thing I want to bring up to you is like the the SE again, the SE versus the NE. Um, so a few days ago I, I went to work and my boss is an, e, is an ENTJ jumper. The ST. Okay. Yeah. Give me reporter report. No feeling, just reporter stuff. And yeah. uh, and uh, she looks exactly like one of the people I interviewed. Also, <laughs> one of the yeah. ST okay. <laughs> and uh, also, <clears throat> so I noticed the any SE right away because it happened so quickly that I was like, so so with NI you can only do one thing at a time, like one work at a time. You cannot channel change when you're doing one task. It's just one task, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I think I think about that. Yeah, I get annoyed if I have to do. Um, no, oh well. Anyway, the TE wants to do more, but but the yeah, NI. The NI but the TE is getting the thing to work. So the yeah. NI is the one thing to work, right? Yeah. So she's trying to get the TV to work so that she can do it. So I work in the fitness industry, and right now because of COVID, the fitness for seniors is half: fifty percent in person, fifty percent online. So she okay. needs to set up a TV with a camera so that the seniors who are doing the fitness exercise at home can use their Zoom to log in and, and follow, follow with the exercise. And at the same time, she also needs to make sure that the, the people who attend can also have the chairs um, ready so that they can also do their exercise. So while she's trying to do the TV stuff, I was asking her some questions about something that happened in another room. And she freaked out on me. She's like, Kendrick, I can only do one thing at a time, OK? Can you just please, just please leave, like, just please come back later, you know, because she has feminine tea, right? You know, because so just please, I probably have done the same. <laughs> yeah, just please, like, yeah. please, Kendrick, let's, let me just finish this first, okay? Because I'm like, because I'm challenge changing, right? I mean, what about the other room? What about this room, right? You know, uh, uh, so finally, we go to the next room, and then now this is where I see the SE channel changing versus the, the SI, because I'm SI, right? Yeah. So now we have to move physical objects from one storage place to another storage place and yeah. i could only move one physical object at a time like one one group of physical ah, objects at a time. Mm-hmm. And so while i'm trying to move that one physical object so you know it's fitness right so we have the stepper we have the, yeah. the risers we have the body bars the, the barbells yeah. we have the exercise masks the ability ball so i'm only moving one category of, of physical equipment at a time so if, if i'm doing um steppers i'm only moving the stepper but no my manager is using her se chaos she's like Oh, and what about the body bars? And what about the what about the the, the stereo? And what about the, the the stability? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm only moving the bars right now. Okay, don't tell me about the other. Oh. Don't tell me oh, about the other. Thing. Don't tell me about the the, t, the the stereo. Don't tell me about the thing. It's one physical thing at a time, one category. The barbells. I'm just doing barbells. Uh, this is really really interesting. I'm like her, you know, and I I know somebody else uh, who is like you, and I. I I recognize this crash. I mean, the clash between those. Wow, yeah. it's interesting. And then I'm like so annoyed, right? And, I, and then after I got so annoyed, I paused myself. I'm like, oh, oh my God, am I annoying those NI people with my NE? Like, oh my God, like channel changing about stuff like that's off top, like a, a completely different topic. Like, yeah. like for example, I, I'll give you another concrete example with NI versus NE, right? Yeah. So with NI, let's say we're talking about that. Let's say we're, uh, we work together and then you'll say, okay, Kendrick, today we're going to talk about how to deal with the staff hiring just hiring we're gonna talk about hiring yeah and then all of a sudden i tell you oh how did your vacation go last weekend or um <laughs> what, what, what kind of food do you have in the fridge or um hey did you hear about the voting last few days ago you know so i'm like oh no all this. 
She's like, no, we're talking about talking about hiring staff. Yeah. Hiring staff. Yeah. But I could talk. I could channel change within. Like they, uh, David Shan said that. Um, I think they said that the feminine NI will talent channel change a lot, but it's within the box, you know. And I do that because I can channel change if it relates to what we are doing. Yeah, but you the know, sensory, the sensory of it. Yeah, but I couldn't talk about how was your weekend, you know. No, no. Yeah, but, I, but 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 you're also uh, info <laughs> dominant, and I'm energy dominant, so I should be, you know, the goofy one. Uh, who is not really, you know, isn't that a bit goofy to just ask about weekends and stuff when you're doing something else? You know, you know, do you understand my question? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I get the goofy stuff, but I think when you're at work and you're TE lead, you're thinking about working, you're not thinking about having fun. Your FI is the no. bottom, so the fun thing is not present, you know? No, no. Yeah, like your TE, right? So, um, yeah, so like I said, like, like I, I piss her off by challenge changing on when she was working on that one task, just getting this area set up, you know, and now I'm talking about like different rooms, a different, you know, thing. Yeah. It's, really hard. it's also really hard for me when I have three children and my husband is a sailor. So he's away for like uh, one week or two weeks and I'm alone with three kids. And, um, <clears throat> you know, they need help, all of them. And, you know, when you have three kids who need help at the same time with different things, <laughs> yeah. that's really hard. And I become really uh, horrible. Yeah, but you can challenge change. I'm only, with the I'm only one person, you know, <laughs> those kind yeah. of stuff. But but you can challenge change with a sensory. So if 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 uh, you know, I, I mean, I can't even do it. I don't have SE, but I can, I can just explain how annoying it is. Like like my, 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 what my boss did when I was organizing like one physical object, and they wanted to do something another different physical object. You know, you know, mm -hmm. or like let's say another thing that I noticed with SE people is like let's say we're playing tennis. So yeah. for me, it's just one thing: tennis, one physical yeah. thing. That nope, they're looking at people that's uh, skateboarding, and then they're looking at the person that's playing basketball, <laughs> and they're looking at the person that's, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you know, have rollerblades, you know. And I'm like, no, we're playing tennis, just tennis, just one sensory thing, you know. Or, or if you go to the gym, people that has high sensory, they'll do all sorts of weird stuff, you know. Let's say they're doing a, a, a squats, and then suddenly they'll change and they'll start doing like like a push-ups in between and then stop and then they'll start doing something like different again like skipping rope and then they, they, they keep challenge changing that's the sensory right um not for, for me I'm like no or just I see people yeah. yeah at the gym today i was i was uh changing all the time i did a little bit of everything <laughs> jumping around yeah like like I, like I teach spin i don't know if you've taken a spin class so, yeah, I, so yeah, my, well. girlfriend, my girlfriend went to my spin class and my girlfriend is se right and ironically the thing that she liked the most was that se channel changing She's like, oh, hmm. I really like it when like we were like sitting and we were doing the fast bike and suddenly he told us to stand up and, and start like pedaling <laughs> while standing up. And then suddenly yeah. we have to sit down again. And it's like so many changes with the movement. I'm like, I'm like, really? That's what you like? I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. Oh. It's like suddenly I, to, I really have to sleep on that one. I, I mean, I didn't know. Well, um, yeah, because I'm trying to, I'm really trying to build, you know, the understanding of, of who am I? And I, I only, I thought I was any, you know, because uh, the, the descriptions everywhere about NI is, is so different from what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. So it was kind of, um, yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna watch this, uh, you know, in a year and I'm gonna say that, oh, I didn't understand anything back then, you know, it's gonna, because, you know, the understanding is, is getting, you know, I, I build kind of. Yeah, I mean, that's why the interviews are good because then you can, you know, gather from the tribe, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. wow, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, uh, the, it was really painful, you know, to to uh, to get my type was really painful because I had been building so long on that ENFP stuff. Yeah. So I was now then I had I really physically or not physically, but it felt like that. I had two different rooms, two builds, two worldviews, so I could go into the ENFP worldview and kind of be there that I couldn't simultaneously see the other one. So I had to kind of shift and move into the other. And then I was in the ENTJ world and, and saw the same things and they meant something else. So uh, I couldn't, you know, just erase one world without having another one. So I had to build really quickly. And um, now I think in three weeks, I, you know, I, I don't know how many hours I put into this, maybe, well, 
how many a hundred hours of sleep work in three weeks or something you know really a lot uh so i think uh, the entj now world is kind of, kind of quite solid already well you're talking to me i'm an net imagine you're talking to an nefi you should see their channel changing it's crazy like they'll uh one day one week they'll be in rock climbing they'll buy all the rock climbing gear they'll have the they'll mm -hmm. have the shoes for it the, you know and the, the chalk and stuff and yeah. one minute they'll get bored and now they're gonna get into uh you know uh backpacking and then they'll get bored now they'll do tennis and they'll get bored and now they'll do music and then they'll get bored and they'll do something else and they're just channel changing on the you know their hobbies and what they're consuming. Yeah, but but I thought I did that too because I when in most classes when they talked about NI, somebody was doing the same thing for like twenty years or something or or, the, or more, and I I don't know if I've done that really. Um, How long have you been I a math teacher for? Sorry. How long have you been a math teacher for? Um, seven, seven years, and. Uh, Actually, I wanted to become a math teacher already when I was uh, 13, 14. <laughs> okay, there you go, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's your OI. So, yeah, exactly. And I was in, in, into science. So I was actually a biochemist first and I didn't like that one because uh, it was lots of sensory work. You know, we had to be in the lab, do the wet lab and I didn't like that. And then I'm not so organized. I can't really make uh, really good notes. You know, you have to write down everything you do and oh, I just can't do that. So what what job did you do before teacher before math teacher? Uh, I studied biochemistry and I was doing actually uh, I was working on a PhD um, yeah. in molecular genetics and uh, it was about um, muscular disorders and some you know genetic um, um, disorders and uh, uh, but in Finland we have uh, quite long maternity leaves also so uh, I had my uh, first uh, daughter then also and um, and then I was very sick when I was pregnant so I couldn't work so I had many years uh, when I was kind of off you know so I didn't do basically anything I was almost like a ho home wife or something and uh, uh, I decided I wanted to become a teacher so I decided to study math and physics so I, I took uh, two years of uh, physics and about three years of maths and in Finland it works this way that if you want to become a math teacher or or chemistry teacher or something you have to be become a you have to have a masters in in mathematics for instance and then on top of that you study uh pedagogics you know how to teach and things like that and it it takes about a year so it's kind of like an extra education and then um then you're a certified teacher so we don't have a program which is separate for you know you don't start to study to become a teacher immediately so um you can kind of diverge a bit later um maybe in your third year or something and uh, um so i had this master's thesis in biochemistry but i needed to have you know minors in physics and, and maths also so I, I kind of did this after my kids were born you know so that's why I've only been a teacher for seven years, actually eight years. Yeah. yeah, and before the teacher, you were in academia already. So this, even right yeah. now, you're still in academia. It's still the same umbrella, right? Yeah, yeah, basically, oh, yeah. But if it, yeah, and the hobbies, uh, the folk dance, actually I started when I was 11. <laughs> I did that for two or three years. I had a break and I started again when I was a student. Yeah, and uh, I played the piano as a child and now I do that again, you know? Um, I had some other hobby with the uh, rear facing uh, child seats in the cars and really NT stuff, uh, explaining to people and helping them and TE, you know, um, without pay, actually, you know, it was kind of volunteer work and uh, I got mad at the tribe, so I quit, you know, so it was really interesting. Um, and I wrote, uh, I think, a thousand blog uh, posts on that mm, for three years or something. Yeah, so I'm just trying to illustrate the difference between NI and NE. And so for you, your NI, you've got, you've been in academia for all this time. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, NE, the last ten years of my life, I've worked in an office. Okay, mm -hmm. I've worked in um, um, a, what do you call it? Like a, a hardware store, building a merchandising uh, displays. I yeah. work as a personal trainer and a group fitness instructor and a senior fitness instructor. I work as a travel blogger. I work mm -hmm. as a YouTuber, like I, I'm, I'm doing YouTube right now. Uh, I, I, was, I was a paid travel writer. Um, yeah. I'm working at elections. So it's like, so like channel changing 
Yeah, like, really, really different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there you go. But, but <clears throat> my first OI that I'm very proud of is the fitness because I've done it for eight years now. So I'm like, oh, that, that's my yeah. first, my first OI is an EP because even before that 10 year time span, I was also channel changing the year before I was working in an office mm-hmm. um, with banking. I was working in Starbucks. I also mm-hmm. work uh, in fast food. I work in a restaurant. So it's like channel changing, channel changing, channel changing, channel changing, channel changing, right? Yeah. So, so it's like. But but I think I think I kind of um, maybe I search for the best uh, path, kind of. So I I really relate to the saying that the feminine and I channel change within the box, kind of. That uh, it's not like. I've really been at the same school or something all the time. So I worked for uh, one year at, at one school where I could plan the whole program. It was a, for uh, it was basically a, almost like a community college the first year. So I almost uh, I was kind of I was not really hiring people, but I was kind of you know looking for people who were uh, taking uh, giving courses, and I was also teaching there. Uh, so for a year, and then I studied physics and maths. And after that, uh, I was five years in one school and now I changed. So this is the second year in another one. And I think um, maybe someone with a masculine NI first or something wouldn't even change their job. I mean, would be at the same place, same school all the time. I could never do that. I would be so bored. So I, I really need some change, but it's kind of like within yeah. the same. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. You're challenging within the same category. So you're yeah. academia, but you did different things within the umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of. My, my girlfriend is also NI, and she's been doing admin work for mm-hmm. the last, I don't know, um, 14 years at least. She's, doing, yeah. she's been stuck in the same role. She hates it. She's been stuck doing the same admin role, right? But she channel okay. changed. She worked for different companies, but the same role, you know? Um, so, Yeah. Anyways, uh, Jeanette, I think we got to wrap up this interview. We talked for uh, two and a half hours already. Um, oh my God, it's almost midnight here. <laughs> we, went, we went crazy here, but uh, all right. Uh, thanks for coming out. I appreciate this interview. And it's it was great. It was great. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate it a lot. All right. Well, so. you have lots of sleep on right now. So uh, we'll <laughs> see you, see you later. later. <laughs> Bye-bye.